the Nathan, Nathan and Steve Show. Let's have a good time. You have never seen a show like you're about to see today, folks. This is going to get crazy. Who else is going to tell you about the games? About the news that's news about the games? Are you going to listen to some boring other goobers? Why not trust these two YouTubers? So we're having lots of fun. It's a good time talking about games. We'll tell you about things that are straight up fire and about some devs that are freaking liars. So we learned our lesson about talking bad about Borderlands. We sure did. <laughs> it's the Nathan and Steve Show. Let's have a good time. No copyright music like Shania Twain, but we sure do talk about video games. <laughs> And we also like all kinds of things, so you might hear us say whatever's on our brains. Brains. The Nathan and Steve Show. 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 Lots of games you need to play. So we'll have a lot of freaking fun today. With the nipple laser ray. That's what they say. The Nathan and Steve Show. Brought to you by the Nathan Napalm Channel. And our partners at Fringe Pony Television Network. <laughs> Thank you to the members on YouTube and the subs on Twitch. Thank you all for joining the Nathan Napalm Nation. You help keep the lights on so I can keep streaming and pumping out content. I want to also thank the highest tier members for their epic support. Bounty Code, Jared Woodhouse, Dimelos, Farthest Reach, Sparrow, Random Rob, Galarain Moonsong, What's the Takeaway, Bad Wolf Gaming, Robert Deneka, Pip Pop, My Boot in Your Ass, The Crinkle One, Scruffy Bard, Aaron Owen, and Steven's Magic Castle. Thank you for your highest tier membership. Support the Nathan Napalm with Super Chats or by clicking join to become a member of Napalm on YouTube or by subbing or with bits on Twitch. Every dollar helps feed a puppet for a day and keep Nathan on the air. Thank you all so much for your support. Stream is starting soon. Oh. The Nathan and Steve Show, let's have a good time. You have never seen a show like you're about to see today, folks. This is going to get crazy. Who else is going to tell you about the games? About the news that's news about the games? What's up, everybody? We're live with the Nathan and Steve Show. We got, we got lots to talk about today. I am Nathan, joined with my good friend steve hey what's up guys we got tons of stuff to talk about today tons of stuff yeah so i hope you brought your snacks and sausages i hate to spoil it but i don't think there's any news about horses that i remember i don't think which is a bummer for me but you know what are you gonna do you can't win them all they say it has been a busy week though um we're gonna kick this right off the bat we're gonna talk about a little dragon's dogma dragon's dogma 2 yeah, you know we got to talk about that. I want to say that I'm not sure I'm going to stream the game so much because all the controversy, I just don't think it would probably do well. Um, yeah. But I have been playing it, and uh, I love the game. The game is really stinking good. It's really good. I'm having a blast with it. It uh, it's I don't know, man. It's the kind of game that it's really it's really how. Uh, 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 an open world RPG in a fantasy setting should be, I think, when it comes to a, a lot of the stuff going on in the game. Agreed. But it's really getting uh, the the DLC situation and the performance issues is the big knocks that people have. Yeah. I figured maybe we'd talk about those things. 
Yeah, it, it does seem like, um, once again, that maybe, like, they didn't optimize it the best. Um, especially for PC players, I feel like I feel like they're getting beat up pretty bad. The yeah, I've heard if you have a really high-end PC, you won't have issues, but, you know, the majority of people don't have... Top the of the top that of the top of the line, you know. Yeah, I've I've seen some things. Now I will say this: the game is very CPU um, heavy. So uh, even if you have a really good graphics card, but maybe your um, maybe your CPU ain't that great, uh, that's gonna that you're gonna you're going to get beat the worst. Uh, if you're okay, if it doesn't like absolutely just ruin your day, that when you you know a ton of enemies on the screen or go to a town or something like that. And the frames dip and drop down to about 30 frames per second. If that doesn't absolutely just... If that's something you could deal with, you're probably... And you got a decent PC, you're, you're probably going to be okay. Um, but it does... Because there's no locked frames per second yet, um, it does kind of sway, right? On the PlayStation 5, it fairly stays from... You know, I haven't ran analytics. I'm just going off of what I see and what I experience it feels like it stays around 30, and sometimes it'll get up to maybe 40, 50. Um, yeah, I you know, would agree. Now, the PlayStation 5, if you don't change the settings, and you're playing on a 4K screen, it will your PlayStation 5 will automatically switch to 4K, um, or some version of, you know, uh, whatever they call that, where they it's kind of a fake 4K. Whatever it is it's doing, and you will get less frames. Um, I'm mostly playing a 1440, and so I'm getting, I mean, it, it doesn't bother me. It's, it's, it's good enough. You know what I mean? I'm, it doesn't. Yeah. I feel the same way. It's, it's, unless you're like that ridiculous to own, to never drop, you know, some people can't tolerate a game going at 30 frames per second these days. Right. Um, We're spoiled. For me, in most games, that especially, I don't know, in most games, for me, it's not a game breaking thing for me. So I, I can deal with it. And even if after, after you play the game for a little while, you just sort of get used to it anyway, I feel like. But yeah. Uh, so that for me is not a huge issue. It, it, would it be nice if the game ran at 60 FPS easily? Yeah, yeah, sure. Do I wish there was a performance mode setting on PS5? Yes. Me too. But uh, there's not. There's not <laughs> so. You get what you get, and it's manageable for me. It's not ruining the game for me, I'll say that. Yeah, and the game is so good. Uh, it's so much fun. This is just a... Uh, we don't. Me and Steve were talking about this before the show. We don't get a lot of games in this style that's like a real, um, you know, high fantasy open world RPG where it's deep and you can you can get as... dive in as deep as you want, and um, especially with good combat... And feeling like an adventure. Uh, and also, um, I kind of played through the first, I'd say, five or six hours twice now. And I did find brand new things that I swear weren't even there my first time. Now, that brings us to a good point. Another reason, there's a couple of reasons people are mad. Performance is one. Um, but one of the most confusing for me when I realized, as well as for a lot of players, is the whole you can't make another character. And when I listen, I expected this game that you make one character, right? And that's what you gotta. That's 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 what you play. That's just the like in the first was. one. Yeah, that's the way they advertised it. That that was normal. But when I realized you couldn't, even if you wanted to, just there was no option to start a new game. In which case, it would pop a window like, "Hey, it's going to delete your old character if you start a new game." You're like, "Okay, I know, I want to start over." You can't even do that. Now that's odd. Um. Thankfully, yeah, yeah, very uh, odd. We do got news. Capcom did say that in the near future, uh, they got an update coming um, that they're trying to get out as quick as possible. So, um, and it's going to address that. We're going to have a way to, um, we're going to have a way in order to start a new game, uh, which should have been in the game from the beginning. That's really odd that they did that. But yeah. that's coming. So if you want to start a new game, you can. Uh, if you're playing on console, you can just play on a different profile. That's what I did. Uh, if you're playing on PC, that you can go through on Steam and delete your, go in and delete your um, internal save. It's kind of a pain. You're gonna probably have to look up a guide. But thankfully, that is coming as well as a couple other fixes. Um, uh, they're they're going to add more options for PC players uh, to be able to, um, like motion blur on off in the options. 
uh, being able to turn on ray tracing on or off, um, and to and they're going to set up for a frame rate. So uh, variable, which that's what it is now, um, or a max of thirty frames per second for PC and Xbox. I'm sorry, I'm not PC. Sorry for PlayStation Five and Xbox. Um, so it'll lock it at 30 frames for uh, the consoles, and I would assume you'll be able to lock it at 30 or 60 if you have a good enough rig on PC, I would I would assume. What's up, Just Let yeah. Me Play? So this is needed. Um, they also did make a comment about the cash shop, and I think we should definitely talk about that. So the game... Yeah. The nasty part about the cash shop was that they let all the early reviewers and YouTubers and... Um, all the gaming journalists go ahead and get a copy of the game. Didn't say a word. Well, actually, that's kind of a lie. They did let them all know there would be a cash shop. Um, most people didn't speak about it, so I think the mass majority of people didn't know it was going to have a cash shop because not a lot of people were talking about that in their reviews. And nobody could see it until the day of release. When it launched, the cash shop launched with it. Um, yeah. so, so it almost came out of nowhere for a lot of people. I do want to say, me and Steve have talked about this, and um, we put quite a few hours into the game, especially collectively. The cash shop is silly. Um, it shouldn't be there, agree? No, it should not be there at all. But it's dumb to spend money on it. It is absolutely yeah. ignorant to do that. because You would immediately regret it. You would regret it, because all these items are just priced normally with in-game money. Um, do, you, do you have a list of them? Uh, I could probably pull it up and find it. Sure. I'm um, trying. To, I I was trying to find one earlier, and then I forgot what I was doing. Like a fool. <laughs> <laughs> List of microtransactions in Dragon's Dogma Two. So when I when I say that it doesn't, when you're playing the game, it doesn't even feel like it's being like, oh man, I should probably just buy this for three bucks off the cash up. Actually, it feels like I would be an idiot for doing that because it's not yeah. that hard to get gold in the game. Now, this guy, it's not easy. It's not, like, so easy to get that you're going to be rich, you know what I mean, in the game. But it feels right. It feels like a normal, just a normal game, dude. Yeah, it really does. I mean, did you happen to find the list of them? I cannot find yes, one I for found some it. reason. So, Can you throw me a link there? Uh, yep. It's just, a, uh, it's just a forum post, but it shows them all. Uh, here you go. So let's run through these. So there is the Explorer's Camp Kit, which is three bucks, which is a camp kit you can buy in the game. Um, the only difference of this is that it, it it weighs a little bit less, like a couple of kilograms. Um, that's the only benefit. It's been at three bucks for that. Um, you can buy the soundtrack for three bucks. That's that that actually is feels normal to me. Like you want to buy? The yeah, soundtrack. that's whatever. That's not really even... I wouldn't consider it a cash shop item even. Uh, Harpy Snare, um, Beacons. Now, these are... I don't even use them. I have some uh, that I've collected in the game. Um, this is just to make Harpies come to you, like if they're aggravating the piss out of you because they can fly. Maybe you got an all-melee yeah. group. There's even ways to So, it's to like you really that. do not need this because, for one thing, the Harpies are actually pretty easy, right? Yeah, yeah. The only thing that sucks about them is they can put you to sleep. Oh, yeah. But if, if they don't put everyone to sleep, somebody will come wake you up real quick. They'll be shaking you like, wake up, wake up. <laughs> but uh, they're super easy anyway, though, so they're not really that big of a deal. And if you have anybody in your group or your main character is has ranged attacks, then they are even easier. True. Uh, so, like, this would just be, this is a dumb thing to buy. Plus, you, you can get them in the game anyway. Yeah. If you really want them. And they're not hard to get. And so what what do we got next? Next we got the Heartfield Pendant. Now this is a gift. You can gift it, which is something you can do with your pawns. You can gift things out to other people. Or you can put it on the um on your pawn and it will make their affinity go up a little bit so they like you more. Um that's stuff you normally do in the game anyway. Once again, um not really anything you I I wouldn't be tempted to buy. Um, they do have a, here's where it gets a little nasty. We'll talk about this. They do have the things where you can change your pawn's inclination. You, once again, you can do this in the game, um, but you pick one of four types of pawn behavior, and this one puts it in another random. So when you make your your pawn, you decide their kind of behavior pattern that they're going to do. Um, this one doesn't even guarantee what it is. If you If you buy this item then you use it and it just randomly picks another one. 
so yeah. worthless. Um, and you can get that in the game. Uh, now these keys, um, I, I haven't even really had to use these yet, but apparently at some point in the game, you can use these keys to unlock certain things. Once again, they're yeah. in the game. Um, and you can buy them in the game with gold. Yeah, with in-game gold, and you get them as drops sometimes, so I don't understand. Then there's the Art of meta Metamorphosis. Now, this is what a lot of people went pit got pissed about, because it lets you change your character appearance uh, one time. Um, you can do that in the game, but the reason it pissed people off is since you can't just start a new character yet, they're patching that. Um, once again, you can buy this in the game, but in the game... You could only get two of them. You couldn't buy any more. It'd be sold out after you bought two, right? And that pissed a lot of people off. They're changing that. They're going to up that to 99 can be purchased. Um, so. Even though, even though, even if there's only two in the game, honestly, dude, I feel like if you know that it's a limited thing that you can't just recreate your character over and over... Create a character and and live with your choices a little bit here. Yeah, I yeah, feel like you yeah. know. I mean, if you have two times and you're still unsatisfied, yeah, I think the only reason that pissed people off so bad was because you know the way they made the game where you can't just easily start it. Oh yeah, you. and this DLC shouldn't exist to begin it with too. Exist. So it shouldn't exist. <laughs> then you got port crystals, which once again I have those in the game. They, this is a game where you're not going to be fast traveling all over the place. You do get port crystals sometimes, and in a I really honestly feel like that this game is designed for these port crystals to be an emergency. If you get yeah. stuck, you know, and you're like in a situation where you cannot figure out how to get out of there or you're going to die by trying because your health is too low, then you'll have a port crystal. But you get these in the game. Once again, you can buy them with real money. And then they have Wake Stone, uh, which you get five of these. Um, this allows you to revive somebody or even yourself if you die. I would say. And, and I have already got a bunch of too. Wake Stones and the port crystals and, and i haven't even used any of them yet and the game leans on the harder side so i actually use these um but i've definitely not felt the need to go by with real money um and then rift crystals now this is probably the most tempting thing in here me and steve are talking about this so rift crystals were in the original game too you've got gold and you've got rift crystals there are two currencies you get and earn in the game okay Rift Crystals do a few things, but the most uh, abundantly obvious thing you do with these is hire other pawns, right? Other people's pawns. And the higher level they are from you, the more Rift Crystals they cost. Now, if they're right on your level, they're free. They don't cost any Rift Crystals. And keep in mind, Rift Crystals you get in the game, okay? Um, yeah. From doing all kinds of things, from beating bosses uh, to... Finding certain things out in the world, you're going to get Rift Crystals for just playing the game. And you get quite a bit. And I've not even had to honestly look at mine. Um, and I've got plenty. I think I, I have like a thousand of them. And I hardly even... I just spend what I want to spend. I don't even think about it. So I could yeah, see somebody same. maybe spending money on this just so they could cheese the game and hire some really... Uh, high level pawns. High level pawns. Yeah. And all, it, all it's really would do would just make the game... I don't know. It's like right. buying a cheat code, which is dumb if you really want to enjoy the game. But, you know, whatever. Uh, if that's what you want to do, whatever. I, I don't think that any of this DLC should exist. And it feels like mostly it's just a scam for suckers. Yeah. Yeah, it does feel... It's dirty anyway. Uh, there's no... I, I haven't found a single cash but, shop where I'm like, this is a good, honest cash shop. Um, the good news is, is that you can just completely ignore this cash shop and you actually have a really really fun yeah like let me let me i actually feel like buying any of this stuff on this cash shop would only hurt your gameplay experience not enhance it because like i was talking about if there was anything that would be tempting to me if it existed on the cash shop it would be the ability to buy in-game gold uh because stuff in this game is expensive right yeah and so, like, I'm talking about, this is no joke, when I started playing the game, I got to a certain point where I was like, I really need to upgrade my equipment for myself and for my pawn. And so, like, I spent literally, like, six hours grinding gold to be able to afford to buy everything I wanted. And you would think that would suck, but because this game, the, the open world really is, I almost want to say it's more alive than most other games 
Any game it, I, I actually had a lot of fun grinding that gold because all the crazy things that happened while I was out doing it. And yeah, this is the kind of game where like certain events happen on a certain like uh, schedule. So you may have ran up and down the same road 17, 20 times, but there's still a possibility that one of those random times, some, it's a really high possibility, actually, that something different's going to happen even in the same area. And the whole world is built like that. So times a day, um, how fast you're progressing or how slow you're progressing through the game, all this changes some events that are set up for the game to occur at certain point periods. So when you're out in the world, you'll find like random people getting attacked, random people that need help with certain things, random situations going on that you'll just kind of fall into. Um, the exploration of this game is top notch. Um, Even just simply coming up on a certain type of monster that yeah, just happens to be there yeah. is just like, I mean, this game, it's, it's, I like that there's not fast travel because Me too. they're, when tra traveling around in this game, there's like a sense of of real time danger. Yeah, when you're out in the world that I haven't experienced in a game in a really long time. Because, like for example, and I don't think these two games should be compared for real or anything. But if you take a game like Elden Ring, you know going in you're gonna die over and over. Like yeah. you, it's an accepted ex it's an accepted an accepted part of the experience of that game yeah. because it's just that kind of game. You know what I mean? Yeah. But this game doesn't have to be like that because you, a small thing could change the tide of a battle that you, you could, you can go a long time in this game without dying. And then all of a sudden something, a, a certain situation will happen where you're like, Oh crap, I'm actually screwed. You know? Yeah. So it, it's, 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 it's a, it's an interesting, uh, I don't Dynamic. know, it's just cool. Yeah. It, it just feels good. that sense of danger at all times. And then when it gets dark outside, you're like, oh, oh my yeah, gosh, I, I got I, I to gotta find a camp. Yeah. You <laughs> scary up there. And, and, and it has a good mix of like how much weight you can carry. So you want to bring like, you know, you're going on a long journey. You want to bring at least one or two of your, um, of your camping supplies, but they do weigh a lot. Um, and you're out in the world, and you're finding random things and picking that up so you can sell for gold or or even to equip. Your armor weight, uh, you know, like I'm wearing plate, it weighs a lot. That takes up a big chunk of what I can carry. Um, and you really get out in the world, and you really start feeling the weight of all the systems. And it's super addictive and fun, like mouth breathing drooling i'm completely immersed in the game um so it's a real shame overall that this game is this good could have easily been a contender for game of the year with the game and it's being spoiled for some people due to performance or um or just the fact that the cash up even exists you know what I mean? Like a lot and they, of people, and the surprise launch of it wasn't cool. That either, was the off, dirtiest part. Yeah, and and by the way, I yeah, see just something we play. I think most of the drama is about reviewers not mentioning the monetization more than the actual monetization, and that is on the reviewers because, I mean, in a way, Capcom gets some of that blame because they could have outlined what the cash shop was. And then expectations would have been set early for a lot of people. Like, hey, there's a worthless cash shop in this game. Um, I, it would have yeah, hurt I mean, them honestly, no matter what. They would have been better off just not doing a cash shop. Um, they should have not, because I mean, had they had we been warned, had they told us in advance about it, and it not been a sneak attack, yeah, you know, it would have been less uh, bad. It would have well, and, and you know, like reviewers probably would have told us that it was completely dumb and useless and then and probably nobody would have really cared then because it, they didn't sneak up on us in a dirty way like that and and and, and, and like i said it it's just a scam launch. for suckers that's dirty right like if you're letting people play your game and experience it make a review then all the things need that you know are going to be in the game need to be there right so Slap like even though they told them about the cash shop, I don't think they told them what was in it. I did find some reviewers saying things like, "We'll have to see what they do with the cash shop." I'm assuming it'll be the typical Capcom 
style thing where it kind of won't matter. It'll just be some additional weird things you can buy. I did see some reviewers say that, so it gives me the impression they didn't know what was going to be in the cash shop. They just knew there was going to be one. But I, here's what I can understand from a a non-journalism kind of person, right? Like, I make videos. I'm not a journalist, right? But I make videos, right? And I might, I'll do reviews or whatever. Sometimes when a game is really good, you get so excited that that little thing you read when you first got access to the game saying, you know, by the way, there's going to be a cash shop, that could easily just slip your mind because you're so excited for how cool and fun the game is that I could see someone actually forgetting it. You know, just forgetting to mention that altogether because the game is so good. Or just eye-rolling it like, it's not going to be that big of a deal. I'm not going to mention it. I could see that being something you might do. Because um, the game is super good. And it's it's a lot of fun. And I'm going to probably be playing this game a long time. And I bet yeah. you I will never spend a single dollar in the cash shop. Or nor will oh, I. Oh, yeah, for sure. I won't even be tempted. Easy not to. Yeah, not yeah there's really no to. reason. Uh, now they, There's really no reason at all. They got to fix so that you can. Yeah, it's on purpose. Yeah. It's not pay to win some more. We'll try it. Yeah. No drama. Yeah. It doesn't bother me at all that it exists because it doesn't change the core gameplay in any way. Like Steve said earlier, if they sold gold, then that would uh, that would almost ruin the whole game. Because yeah. even if you're like, well, I just wouldn't buy it. Well, knowing that it exists will mean when you've got a, a, an evening off to enjoy the game for, let's say, three or four hours, and you need to go out and grind, like Steve said, which I've done too. I just went out and said, hey, I really want this armor and these other things. I'm going to go out. I'm just going to kill some stuff. I'll get some XP. I'll level up. I might get some good drops. I'm going to make some gold. And I had fun doing that. However, if it was available to buy in the cash up, I would feel like I'm an idiot the whole time. You know what I mean? Because I'd be like, yeah. wow, I just wasted my whole evening. I could have just spent three bucks. I'm stupid. And I wouldn't have had fun, even though it would have been the same experience, right? Me right. out grinding for gold. Luckily, in this game, it, it turns out that it's a lot of fun going out and grinding. <laughs> this game is fun to explore, man. I'm telling you, if you're making a game right now that's open world style, this game is worth playing to research and development to be like, this is how you do it. Like... It is, I have never, in all the hours I've played so far, explored around and not found cool stuff. And cool stuff happened to me for, like, you're rewarded yeah. for it. Like, it's fun. And, like, even the side quests and all that stuff that you may or may not see. Like, my, I'm finding side quests Steve didn't find. He's finding ones I didn't find. Um they're not, they're, and it's cool. They're just all out there in the world, too. There's not, like, things marking, being like, oh, this character yeah. has a quest. You don't know, you don't know what's it. happening, you know? It's cool. Either you hear, like, here's what happens to me when I'm playing. Either I hear an NPC say something that makes me be like, oh, my gosh, sounds like they might have a quest. Like, they'll just be talking to themselves, right? Like, oh, my gosh, this is such bullshit. I can't believe this is happening to me. And you're like, oh, they might have a quest. And I'll walk up and talk to them, and, they'll, and then they'll start telling me what's going on. So it's very organic or... Dude, sometimes you're just doing what you do, and it turns out there's a quest, right? Like, you might just be buying something at a random little store, like a random little shop in, in a town, and because you bought this one item, the guy will spark up a conversation and be like, oh, that reminds me, blah, blah, blah. And, you, and it'll be a quest. It's like, oh, my gosh, if I wouldn't have bought this random item, I would not even know this, this quest existed. This is so cool. And they're good. They're not just They're not just like, oh, go to this thing, come back, turn it in. Um, it mixes all the elements they built in the game for all the quests. Like, you don't know where to go. You have to figure it out. Like, they'll be like, yeah, it was a cave up on a mountain to the southeast or whatever. And you go out in the world and you explore and you find it. And it feels cool, man. It feels like you really found this place, you know? Yeah. It's like the, the world is so alive. Like I was saying earlier, like, uh, <clears throat> something really cool in this game is... All the NPCs in the game are actually living a life in this world they've created here. And you'll run into these, and legit, there's all kind of side quests, like we're saying, but there's like these ones where you run into like somebody getting attacked by monsters out in the world, for example, and you help them and you get a reward for it, right? And they're like, oh, you saved me, blah, 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 blah. And they go on about their business. Well, you, sometimes you'll run into those characters out in the world and they'll remember that you saved them and yep. stuff. Like it is really cool, man. 
and and if and if they die, they're actually dead in the game. They they're dead. Yeah, you, you can use your white crystals that. on the NPCs and bring them back. Yeah, like that's it's true. pretty cool. Yeah, that's why I don't use them on myself. That I'm saving them for the NPCs. Yeah, in case somebody cool dies. Yeah, it's it's really fun, and uh, they've done a good job of taking the pawn system from the original Dragon's Dogma and making it the same but a little cooler. Like. Now I don't look. I haven't played Dragon Dragon Stomma one in a while, but I'm pretty sure this is new to Dragon Stomma two. I don't remember this being the original. You'll just be out, you know, exploring the world, doing whatever in the middle of nowhere, and you might see a random person just walking down the path or out in the woods fighting a a, a bear or something, and they're a pawn that somebody created. They belong yeah. to somebody, and they're just like out. In your world, they're just wandering around, and then when you talk to them, sometimes they'll approach you and be like, hey, I'm looking for work, you know, uh, I'm good at this, that, and the third, I focus on support, or whatever, they'll like try to get you to yeah. hire them, and they're real people's pawns that they created, and then you can like gift, you can like, when you're done, you can kind of raid them, and you can, oh, what's up, Gula Gula, with that raid, welcome everybody, you can rate them, and, um, and then, you know, uh, use them for however long they're beneficial because they won't level up in your game. They'll stay whatever level they were last played from the person who made them. But you can also put a gift on there and send them back to their person. Also, you can set up quests for your pawn. So I set up a quest for my pawn. I don't remember what I even made it, but you, there's like a system where you can make a little quest. So when somebody yeah. gets my pawn and I made the reward, so I put like 100 gold if you get me this item. That's what I did. Um, so if they get that item and put it on my pawn to get back to me, they'll get a hundred gold, right? And you can set the reward, whatever you want it. And so it's just a really cool thing and it's such a good game. And it, it, it's a shame that it's not probably, they could always turn this around, but it, it's probably not going to go down now in the history of gaming for as cool as it really is because the cash up it's, and the it's going to happen all over again where it's going to be a f years from now and there's going to be this little cult following of people that love dragon's dogma too like with the first one and this could have been so much bigger this time because it's been on the hills of like elder dude the Ring hype, and uh, the hype when it was coming was so big was dude so i big. thought this was going to be a huge huge massive massive success yeah and then tons but, of people refunded dude tons um, of people refunded. i do got bad news though for you okay while we were on the subject of the pawns okay so in this game this is pretty cool if your friends was uh, uh, it is worth mentioning in case this was important to you that the pawns are not cross play so I can only get pawns that were created by PS5 users. Oh right, 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 right. Yeah. So anyway, though, you I can I can just you can go in there and you can search for pawns with like pawn IDs and stuff. You can like look up pawns people made online. Like if you wanted a pawn that looked like Gandalf, you could probably find one. Yeah. Um. Uh. Or uh, you can look at your friend. You can just go to your friend's pawns. So I went in there and I summoned. Nathan spawned winter to come with me on the, the first part of my adventures. And I don't know really how to say this, but she was saying some things to me that made me feel uncomfortable. <laughs> and I, and I, I don't, I don't, I know this is like, I, d I don't want to, I'm telling you this cause we're friends. <laughs> okay. but she was saying stuff to me. Like I value spending time with you more than anyone else. Are and I was like, oh, okay. Right now, dude? Yeah, on. dude. I eventually had to throw her in the brine. I can't believe this. Hang on a second. We got to address this right away. My pawn is named <laughs> after my wife. Let's see what she's got to say about this. <laughs> oh, dang it. I was like, I'm going to have to get off. her out of the party. Let's see if we can get her. This is uh, not right. Mm. Her phone's off. I can't call her right now. Oh, well, she better. If she comes up here, we'll address this live. We'll find out what's going on here. But anyway, a cool th <laughs> another cool thing about those pawns is like, okay, say like he had he had my pawn right and was running around together. They'll tell you stuff that that they've experienced in other worlds, right? Like they'll be like, hey, there's a treasure up here. If you want me to show it to you, and you can you can say go, and she'll lead you to that treasure that she only knows about because she played, she's seen it in somebody else's game. Right. Yeah. And like really cool, man. It's really cool. So they feel, it feels different 
than just an NPC because you know, and the, and then like one time I found a secret, right? And the pawn, one of the pawns that was with me was like, oh, I don't think my master knows about this. I'm going to tell him about it. Dude, that's freaking cool. And now they're going to go back and if he's anywhere near that area, they're going to be like, oh, I know about this. And I'm the one that found it for him. So it's kind of like this really cool community kind of aspect to it that's really, really good. Yeah, the game's awesome. Like, if you can just, if you don't care about the perform, bottom line, yeah. if you don't care about the performance issues, if that's not game breaking for you, and you just ignore the, that the, a cash shop even exists because literally you would regret buying anything on there probably almost within an hour of gameplay. Uh, just ignore the cash shop. The game is really, really good. Like, yeah. it's. It's kind of a breath of fresh air in the realm of open world RPGs in many ways. I and agree. I have been having a blast with it. Like, it's been a while for me since I played a game where, like, I'll be having to do something else for, like, work or something. I'll start thinking about Dragon's Dogma and be like, I kind of want to just go exploring in this game. Like, it sticks I don't, with you, yeah. It sticks with you. It makes you want to play it's, it more. It's cool. It makes like, you feel like you really did it as much as you can feel that way from playing a game. You know what I mean? I'm craving like, it really bad wild. just from our conversation here. I just want to go play it right now, to be honest. It's just a it's really so good game. It's so fun, man. It really is fun. You can end up in the most wildest situations in that game. It's pretty a, cool. There's a patch coming for some of the more egregious problems, like to help with performance and to help with, um, uh, you know, the starting a new game if you decide you just want to throw away your character and start again that that option's coming very 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 soon so if you want to wait for that patch um you know i'm sure after that patch comes out we, we'll discuss it again we'll let you know before we move on to the next subject though because dragon's dogma 2 is kind of the big thing right now um i do want to uh we're going to pull up a video here of a a very popular youtuber um who's reacting uh and says that the cash shop is pay to win i want to hear his interpretation because i'm not seeing it that way um except for that you could use the runes i don't know if that's what he's going to get into in order to get high level pawns and make the game easy i'm not sure what he's going to get into but let's watch that real quick let me know when you got it pulled up steve i got it pulled up all right let me start at the beginning here let's watch this together and react to it all right three two one go What's up, Gamer? Streamcast guy here, and today we're going to talk about the new microtransactions that were just added to Dragon's Dogma 2 because this just sucks. I love Dragon's Dogma. I like this guy's about to start lot. crying already. I've already yeah. beaten the game. He was looking forward I've to it. I've discovered a lot of dungeons. I've broken out of jails. I've done a lot of monster slaying. And He's to be cry, quite dude, frank, Dragon's Dogma 2 cry. is currently my game of the year. It is just oh, it's so game of the year. big okay. and fun and cool. But that was before it released. Uh, Playing a pre-launch version of the game itself, it just felt so reasonably balanced. But now that it's actually released as of last night, Capcom has filled the game with unnecessary pay-to-win microtransactions it is very unnecessary, and i want to talk about sure. that because even if you do still enjoy this game like i do i think it is important to call this crap out but let's get into it hi i'm dreamcast guy and i hope hi. you're having a good day Hello, dreamcast if you guy. could give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already so I'm going to do my best to remain calm because I am recording this to at 7 calm. <laughs> and I do have four roommates, so I probably shouldn't yell or I'm uh, probably going to get a very pissed off text message. But I was actually surprised because when I'm reviewing a game, a lot of times half the fun of it is kind of waiting to see how the internet reacts to it. You know, if I'm playing a game that does feel incredibly unique and fun, you know, a lot of times while I'm working on my video, I'm always just so honestly awestruck to think, wow, what kind of memes, what kind of impact is this game going to have? I agree with them on that. Else? Yeah, it so is when I woke up this morning and realized that it is now mostly negative yeah, on Steam hurts. reviews, I was genuinely negative, baffled dude. That because how sad. could this happen? The game was yeah, just really so is. fun for my 50 hours. They messed up. What Big could con. have gone wrong? Well, it's this. Dragon's Dogma 
More like drags my wallet. See, I disagree. Jesus. Drags your wallet, dude. If I you're buying the stupid crap, minutes, you're an idiot. This sucks. Yeah, I it's do agree with that, too. For fast all travel. this stuff so Paying easily for in the game. character editing. Paying they did not, to revive if you, people when they it die. It would be dumb to Bro, buy it. It's it a scam, basically, if you bought it. Let me pause it real heck? quick. I want to so, say this for my audience, which I think you'll understand in case you haven't played Dragon's Dogma, which it's really hard to interpret this if you haven't played it like how useless this cash shop is. I'll put it in terms that everybody, at least in my community, will understand. This would be like if EverQuest charged you $3 for the basic water. You know, the, the crappy water that you get for like almost nothing off of the sh any inn, any tavern you go to in EverQuest, you can buy the crappy water and the, the cheap food. It would be like spending $3 for like five of those. It makes no sense. Why would you do that? You know what I mean? It's so easy to just buy that with in-game money that it's... The real travesty here is that this even exists because it's so dumb. It shouldn't be there. Like... Yeah. Like, Joe here in the chat said, Revive Stones and Fast Travel are both pay to win. Yes. Yes. But I will say this, that in this game, you're actually ruining your game experience by buying this stuff. Yeah. Like... Revive stones even and fast travel stones or whatever they're called pa fairy ports or whatever uh unlike there is a lot of pay games with pay to win stuff implemented in it that you actually have to pay to to do it experience yeah. the game in a normal way even also uh, you gotta understand the death it, penalty in this game is not that harsh the game nah. auto saves all the freaking time. So I don't care what you're doing when you die. It's going to probably put you right before that fight, right? And you're just going to try again if you don't have a revive stone. Um, you could spend a ton of money and have a ton of revive stones and not die and go through the game. You could do that in, if you wanted to. You get revive stones kind of a lot. It's kind of part of the gameplay, to be honest. Um where you're, sometimes I'm like, I'm not spending my revive stone. I would just rather start over. It's not worth it. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, I've never even used them. There, I've I've not been in a situation yet where I'm like, I better use this. I was in one where I did because I, I had, it was a long fight with a big old boss, right? Yeah. And I was at, the, I almost had him, and he got me. I, I didn't move out of the way in time, and he did a big smash AOE rocks flying, and he got me. And I was like, you know what? I'm reviving. Um, but most of the time, I'm like, screw it. I'm not wasting my revive stones on this. You know what I mean? I'll yeah. save it for a more, you know, serious I like it. I, it's better that way and with these items sucks, because, by the way, don't that's do actually it. how the game was designed to be played. They wanted you out in the world, they didn't want you fast traveling all over the place. Yep. You know? Yeah, don't uh, fast travel. And, and it shows. It yeah. shows that. And, and like, there, there is a sort of a version of being able to move quicker in the game where you can go get like take a cart somewhere like from one city to another and you can choose to fall asleep on the cart so then you're like instantly teleported Maybe there so. but even that is really fun because sometimes you'll get attacked by monsters in the middle of the night and you'll wake up to like your to like ogres attacking and they can destroy the cart and yeah. you're stranded or out there kill some like of the people operating it or whatever yeah yeah so and so, and so uh, there's fun. a lot of fun stuff it feels fun but yeah sometimes i will just fall asleep but it will wake you up if you get attacked or you'll wake up and you'll just be there because it just depends how clear is that road. You know, have you already cleared that road recently? So therefore, you're just going to go, it's going to be pretty easy. Or, or, or one time, dude, I got attacked like 10 times on the way there. And I just was like, I'm not going to sleep. I'm just going to be alert because you can sit in the cart or you can walk alongside the cart. And what I would do, and it does like cinematic angles as you're going. So what, my favorite thing to do with the cart travel, which is the fast travel, um, Besides using stones, which once again, you get in the game, you already get those in the game, right? Uh, so you don't have to buy them on the cash up. That's part of the game that you get some of those. They don't want you to use them a lot, though. The game's designed that way. But what I would do is I would not sleep. I would sit there and just watch, and I would see, like, a goblin up on a mountain. I'd be like, oh, I'm going to go ahead and jump out of the cart now. I'm going to go take care of those goblins before the cart even gets there because I don't want this cart to get destroyed or anybody to die. Um, and it's just fun. Yeah. It's just fun. And even when I'm on foot re-traveling, like I said, the same road, new adventures will happen. This game is built just for you to be out there and not fast travel. All right. 
Yeah, they they messed up by putting this cash shop in. A hundred percent agree. It should just not have been in the game. They'd have got good PR. People would have been like, "Oh my yeah. gosh, another great game!" Like Elden Ring, no cash shop. You get the game. It is what it is. It feels like someone at Capcom, me and Steve talked about this, just said you have to have a cash shop. So they were like, all right, let's just put some items from the game in the cash shop. It really is, it does feel like that. It feels like that they went to the developers and were like, look, we have to have a cash shop for the game. So create some things for us to be able to sell. Yep. And they were like, and they, and it seems like they probably didn't want to have a cash shop. So they gave, made the most idiotic, dumbest things that you could buy you can possibly imagine in a yeah. game yeah all right let's continue watching ready three two one go this is a guy who posts it here in australia obviously the games are more expensive there they have taxes and import fees and stuff but i decided to take a look at it myself and even now uh that guy posted his tweet six hours ago even now it is sitting at mixed reviews so what seems to be the problem let's actually scroll down here wow Literally all negatives. Oh wait, there's a positive. I butchered all my NPCs, and that makes the imp the uh, frame rate better. <laughs> yeah. So apparently, their everything about this game frames. on PC is having some problems. <laughs> apparently, in general, uh, obviously it doesn't work on Steam Deck, which that makes sense. It is a big open world game. The frame rates just across the board it seems like it runs incredibly bad people say it even if you tweak the settings it doesn't look that much better than a playstation 3 game and yet it barely manages to push 40 fps i disagree um, with the playstation here's 3 the main thing, thing it, there's no PlayStation Denuvo, 3 game looked into bad optimization this. That's and microtransactions now here's why people are mad about this is because capcom is a company that typically has been so good about making their games, especially yeah, this Capcom, last yeah, like, Capcom's been doing like great last for years, five or six years, yeah. maybe the last eight years. It is odd. They've been so good at providing this was a really high quality decision, games, dude. listening to feedback, making a good mix of remakes and sequels with stuff like Monster Hunter, Devil May Cry, obviously all the Resident Evil remakes that and, I've been obsessed and with. And I agree with now, some Blair, clear, Capcom a, is known for I am a person that, that makes dumb, a lot of Capcom that content. Make sense. I am kind of, obsessed yeah. with Capcom, which is why I am extra certain that we need to call out this kind of crap. Now, we do need they to call did it apparently out. say, hey, here's a quick update to players on Steam. This came out just a couple minutes ago, right as I was waking up uh, at 6 a.m. They basically were like, okay, we're going to try and fix it so the game it is having a lot of crash errors. We're going to worry about that. I haven't seen any crashes Currently, yet. You can't start a new game. Yeah, it's a crash it's for me yet either. Possible. Apparently, but I'm on PS5 it is a too. Singular save file. You get a single character, and it only auto saves. If you want to try and actually start a new game on PC, you got to like go into the files and manually remove the, the data game. from That's your system. Patch, we know kind now. of bonkers. And here's all the DLC. Now, I, I want to take a look at this specifically because honestly, this is what annoys me the most. This is literally pay to win. Now, sometimes goes. people go, oh, it's optional. You don't need to buy it. I think it still stands as a matter of principle that they're allowing you to just It's sad, buy too, because in this game, it, it ruins the game. I just think that, that is, yeah. it's if going you, to if you buy this crap. game design. Yeah. That if you You're can ruining buy your own experience. a boss-killing power-up, they're going to make bosses tougher so that you're incentivized to buy right. these admittedly very cheap microtransactions. Now, here's my issue is that these are extremely convenient. So rift crystals are how you summon pawns. So uh, the more rift crystals you spend, you can get pawns that are higher and higher level. Yep. Uh, you can always get a pawn for free that is your level. So yep. like currently I'm level Whatever 35. Whatever level you are, you can get any pawn that level for free. free yeah. That's already pretty dang yeah. beefy. But if you want, you can spend As you know, a remember, rift, rift crystals, crystals you get, you get in the game. You get a like lot that, of them in the game. Somebody that's going to uh, not it, just kick butt, but maybe even carry you. So stuff like this is ridiculous. 
wake stones just just literally says hey bring anybody back to life including yourself so yeah, this is basically yourself, like yeah. a continue uh hey, what people also need to know is that value they're they're one of the main if you're fighting like a, a big boss game. if you die and you're like you I, I should buy one of those real quick because i don't have any stone you're not you don't get it immediately you the option yeah, of, right. if you want to use it to get back it up comes to you after you stayed in again total total during the entirety of my 40 hours of play 50 hours of play i can't remember how much it was when i first reviewed it or when i first started reviewing it that video when i was editing it i noticed i had had four wake stones in the entire campaign four now i ended up using two of those four and one i used to revive a character these are incredibly valuable they are a primary part of the game selling them for 99 cents you could go okay that's cheap here's my thing though it still feels like it's stupid that you would sell such an important item at all. Like, yeah, this is right. something that they should sell feel that, yeah. special, should be yeah, cool. Yeah, all of the stuff, really, I guess. Now, oh, God, these are the most ridiculous. Makeshift key. You get arrested in the game occasionally if you act up in town. Oh, that's what uh, the keys are for. Breaking out, out of jail, you pretty much just walk out. Oh. You, you break down a wall and walk out. Arrested, They're selling a so $1 I haven't either. prison key. I do not understand why. This is the stuff that, to me, is the most egregious. A port crystal. You can make a permanent or optional temporary warp stone location. You can put this down and pick it up. These things are incredibly valuable. Selling it for $3, and then they're also selling fast travel things themselves. <sighs> You can pay to change your character. Uh, it costs in-game money to, to edit your character. It's not free. You can change how your character looks. <laughs> God. I'm genuinely flabbergasted. I, I am genuinely He's just sad. stunned yeah. that they would bother right, well, to do Let's stop the video here. Because Get the point I now. do just want to say, too, with the Rift Crystals... Um, I, I like that they're kind of hard to get, like if you pretend like the cash shop doesn't exist, because it gives you that it gives you that feeling of like in a fantasy world where you're like, oh my gosh, you know, my normal party is my level. That's what you're going to be used to if you're not spending a lot of them, right? right. Which is the normal way to play the game. Yep. But like, let's say you're like, okay, I'm about to go try to do this thing that's really hard, so we're going to use a little extra money to hire in like a mercenary to come with us that's higher level you know yeah, what i mean like yeah. it feels like you're doing something instead of just being able to constantly buy high level pawns all the time yeah. which would just be a It'd cheesier way through the game but yeah. yeah i don't know i like all the the feelings that the game gives are really good when you're ignoring that cash up i feel like yeah and i hate to be that guy because i know we're all sick of hearing this and i'm glad people are standing up to him because capcom actually like took a, a a kick in the nuts for this yeah um, which is good right they they deserved it because we need to get out of this mode or we're going to ruin video games um but if you can ignore it if i know nobody wants to hear that but if you can just pretend like it don't exist which is what i'm doing the game does not feel like it is pushing you to go to the cash shop it does yeah. not you can tell that they designed the whole game the developers not knowing anything about a cash shop right they designed well, to me, game. the game's not hard as Elden Ring. No, so, no, no, I no, mean, no, no. You know what I mean? It's not like you're going to be like, oh, it's so hard. I need to go to the cash shop. I no, don't know. No, I've never even been tempted to go. And I, I really honestly believe I'll complete the whole game and never spend a dime in that cash shop. And nor even really feel inclined to. So I think there is a difference when people say ignore the cash shop. When the game is designed to make you want to spend things in the cash yeah, shop yeah. versus the developers just made the game and balanced it to be really fun. And then Capcom comes in towards the end of development is like, figure out something for the cash shop because we've got to have, I it. mean, if you're smart, you don't even have to really ignore the cash shop because if you go look at it, you'll see that it's completely dumb to yeah. waste any money on anything in there. If you play the game long enough to get to the first big city, you'll immediately yeah. realize how dumb the cash shop is. It's a shame they put it in there. They shouldn't have done it because this could have definitely been a game of the year contender and not been a um, niche uh, kind of, you know, love by some people kind of game. This could have been a paraded in the streets, Baldur's Gate 3 type situation. And instead, now it won't be. 
So that's on them. Yeah. That's what they get. That they deserve that too, by the way. Yep. And um, for doing that, because that was just and and woe to the poor developers because this ain't their fault, right? They made an yeah. awesome game and they deserve to be rewarded and, and praised for making a cool game. Shame on Capcom for making the decision to slap in some silly seems like they made it up, you know. 30 minutes before the game went live. That's what it feels like. They were just like, okay, yeah. put some stuff in there. Let's go. Um, so, yeah, and, and also, we didn't mention this. I saw you guys in chat, and that's a good point. Because I play on PS5, that particular situation hasn't even happened to me. For people playing on Steam, a lot of people are having trouble because of the DRM, the Nuvo they used, and it's causing people um, r really bad performance issues and or they can't even play the game because they're using that shitty system to help with anti-cheating. Um, and that's just a damn shame. That's just, a, that's just a shame. Yeah, and that's really probably just all because so you can't cheat to get the... The cash ups. This probably is. Yeah, they probably put all that in there. For that. There's people are modding. People have already modded the game to get all the stuff in the cash shop for free, <laughs> which is ruining their own experience even still. Yeah, just that's how dumb these cash shop yeah, items don't are. Don't buy the items. It actually will ruin your experience. It will not enhance your experience at all. Uh, the game is balanced perfectly with the in game currency for it to be fun. All right, let's move on, though. Um, yeah. What Dragon's is Dogma next? 2, the end. The end of Dragon's <laughs> Dogma 2 for this episode. Um, next, I want to talk about this, all right? We got, a, we got a juicy rumor, guys. Juicy. I don't know how many people's heard of this, but this is pretty nuts for me. Um, so recently at, at PAX, they were showing off uh, Final Fantasy XIV's new expansion, um, you know, Dawn Trail, and they were talking about the stuff that comes in the game, right? Um, some uh, in the collector's edition, some stuff you get, right? Which is a it includes a Final Fantasy IX Arc summon as a Final Fantasy XIV mount that you get, a wind up Princess Garnet minion uh, who is Dagger, you know the the princess from Final Fantasy IX. Um, if you pre order uh, Dawn Trail, you also get a wind up Zidane. Uh, that's how I always says name anyway. Minion uh, who is the main character from Final Fantasy IX. Well, that's odd. Um, so all of Final Fantasy XIV's bonus pre-order and collector's edition items are all themed around my favorite Final Fantasy of all time, Final Fantasy IX, and that's weird, right? Like, why would you suddenly just do that? And so Yoshi P on the stage says, you may have noticed a lot of Final Fantasy IX references here, but the reason is a secret. And then he did the little zip in his mouth shut. Come on, guys. The remake, rumor, everything else on that list of that guy, that, that leak, came true. The only thing that we haven't got confirmed from that list was a Final Fantasy IX remake. Now, some people are saying it could be a... a, a an animated series? An animated series. It could also be a crossover event. But once again, it could be a crossover event coming too. But here's the deal with that. They don't just do crossover events for no freaking reason. It always is around yeah. the launch of something or to, you know, whatever. Um, so if even if there is an upcoming crossover event, wouldn't shock me. I actually think that's probably going to happen. But they would only do that if there was something big. And I'm going to be honest. If I'm facing nine animated series, okay, I guess, you know, whatever. I mean, I, I would personally love that. I, I mean, I, I, obviously, it. I want a remake of the game. How, how about both? Let's have both those things. How about yeah, it? let's have both those things. Because I would probably love Final Fantasy IX to be turned into an animated series. That would be really cool. Obviously, lower priority of want than the remake of the game, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, I, and then when I was reading this... Um, and it goes into talking about the you know Square's busy remaking Final Fantasy VII with the third one in the trilogy. And it does go on. These people at least say um, that they believe that one may end up being a PlayStation Six launch title, uh, which it could be. It really could be. Um, that that hurts my soul a little bit though because it's like so the original remake we got on PS4, we got the uh, the new Rebirth, the second one of the remake on PS5, and then we're going to have to wait for PlayStation 6 for Final Fantasy 7, the third one. Like, that, that's a little annoying. I hope that's not true, to be honest. Yeah. But whatever. Uh, Final Fantasy 9 remake, I'm all about it. Do it. And here's the deal. 
Obviously, it's not going to be as big of a deal as the Final Fantasy VII remake. Like, they're not going to put that much energy into it. It's not going to be a trilogy. There's no way they're going to do that. But no. it could... They don't even have to do that much. If it's if you can turn your camera because it's a 3D environment, even if they kept a PS1-type aesthetic with better resolution, you know what I mean? That would be fine. I don't know what they got planned, but my expectations are low. If they just remake it with PS1-type graphics, you know what I'm saying? Kind of like a throwback kind of feeling to it. But I can move the camera and I can really explore the world and all that. I would be so happy with that. Thanks for the Super Chat. What's the takeaway? PC Master Race. Fall from Glory. Viva la console peasant revolution. <laughs> <laughs> it is sad. In many ways. That we live in a time. Again, because this ain't the first time this has happened. Where consoles now sometimes are the best way to buy a game. Right? Like... I honestly yeah. think that Dragon's Dogma 2 is probably better on the PS5 than any other way to play it. I'm not, I have no issues. I'm just playing the game. It runs, I mean, it ain't running no 60, 120 frames per second, but it's fine. It looks fine. It's running fine. I, I don't even notice it. I don't even think about the frames. I'm just playing the game. Um, and the PC port should be better. And I think it's that anti-cheating, trying to stop mods, all that kind of stuff is what's really screwing it over. But yeah, let's get yeah. this Final Fantasy IX remake. And here's, I want to say one more thing about this remake. Stop with this console exclusivity thing. It hurts your sales. Stop it. Release the Final Fantasy IX remake on everything. If it's yeah. if it's too powerful for the Switch, okay, that's understandable. Nobody's, nobody's going to get mad about that, right? But right. PlayStation 5, Xbox, PC, and the Switch 2. You know what I'm saying? Like, just you know, I, I, if this, I will be actually surprised if this game is too much for the Switch. Yeah, I'm thinking. That which too. means that it's it's more <laughs> crazier than I think that it's going to be. Which would be interesting if it can't run on the Switch. If that was hypothetically a thing, right? Like, uh, do, do you want this game to be voice acted? I kind of don't, but I think they will. I kind of do. You want it to be voice acted? See, I, yeah. I have these kind of internal... See, look at these screens I'm showing right now. If it looked like this, the whole game, in 3D, like this, I would be hyped. Yeah, I would be too, and I would I would still <laughs> like there to be voice acting in the game. For See, some I, I kind of feel like I already think I know what they sound like, and I feel like Square did a good job with that with 7, where I didn't feel shocked at all, but we also had Crisis Core. We had, like, some things. We had Kingdom Hearts with some of the characters in it. We kind of had been... Our brains had kind of already been swayed for a lot of these characters and how we thought they sounded. And for but nine, these guys are voice acted in Kingdom Hearts. True. Some Zyde and the uh, what are those one games called? The City of Final Fantasies. Ah, uh, true. So maybe it would. I mean, so if it's not whatever, I just think it would be cool if if this game was remade to the level of detail where they felt like that voice acting fit in it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Th thank you for the super chat, Grendel Reaper. He says Final Fantasy Nine Memoria Project. Let's pull that up and look at it. It's how it should look. And he also uh, said sort of. So oh, I've seen that before. Uh, I think we've watched it on the show before. I'm going to pull it up. I while think we're we talking. have. Sort of so, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Final Fantasy IX Memoria Project. Let's take a look just for anybody maybe watching this that hadn't seen it. Um, it yeah, if it looked this good. This is, be I'm going to, I'm not going to lie. This is beyond my expectations of what I'm thinking. They did. This looks really good. Oh, wait, let me, uh, let me share this link with Steve real quick. All right, here we go. You ready? I'm getting it pulled up right now. Yeah, I think this actually looks better right. than what I'm thinking, but this would be insane. Go, 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 go. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, go. It's a proof of concept. It's not meant to be viewed as a playable product. We will never do anything to infringe upon Square Enix's copyright. 
Yeah, this this level of a remake, I would think. I mean, I've already seen this, but I know I hasn't got there yet. Come on now, start the game. Yeah, like this looks nuts. Look at this. I would yeah, this would be. I would out. be pumped. Yeah, I would geek out if it looked anything of this quality. And honestly, I don't think this would be that hard for them to do. I wouldn't compared think so. to Final Fantasy VII. I mean, because like this is like almost cutscene level apart right here. But once it gets into the what the game would look like, I really don't think it would be that hard for them yeah, to pull off. And whatever artist did this did a really good job, by the way. You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, she looked good. That looked legit. That didn't seem like a cheesy. Look at Vivi, bro. But once again, this will be much easier to do than, say, Pompey 7 Remake, right? It makes sense for them to remake 9 and get it out quicker than, it, than say, remaking Final Fantasy 8, where it's going to have to be realistic. You know what I mean? One, well, also for the fact that with this art style and this level of graphics, you can pretty much do a one-to-one -one remake. Like, they, it could still have the normal style, old-school Final Fantasy open world, and it just looks like this good, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It would be like, you know, uh, not like the open world in Final Fantasy, like the old-school style, where it's, you're all small running around on it or whatever. Like, basically the same size as the old game, just with these graphics. Yeah. And I want it to be turn-based. I'm going to be a yeah, little upset yeah. if it's not. I'll be quite a bit well, upset. If it's a one-to-one -one remake, it, it better be. God, this game, I'm, I'm almost going to cry. Just, <laughs> oh, man, this is not it. Is. Oh my gosh, dude. That makes me just... Oh, that makes me tear up. Look at now. Here's some game. Well, now here's game what. It, yeah, if it were an actual game, I really don't think that this would be that hard for them to do. Uh, I really don't. Let us know. Thanks for giving the memberships. Who do we get? Who got membership? Wild Relic. Welcome back, my friend. Fapples. Fapples. Uh -huh. You're a member now. Crank and Nuts. The Great Vendini and RE. Welcome, guys. Thank you, Douglas Miller, for the gift of memberships. Yeah, this is what I want. See how the voice acting is in this? this yeah, I think this now is that perfect. I'm seeing it, yeah. And you gotta remember, this is made by an amateur, right? Yeah. And it sounds good. And because of the art style, they can also get away with some of the characters sounding a little more like a cartoon style than a... Yeah. yeah. Like, imagine how cool no. they, and hilarious uh, Queen of his sound like. Oh yeah, or true. Tina or whatever its name is, but you just think that eats everything. Or the or the evil step queen. Oh yeah. She can wow. sound crazy too. I wonder what the story behind this statue. This could be so cool. Yeah, this 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 is my um, this is like a dream come true. Let's I'm gonna skip forward a little bit. Um. I don't remember how far this goes. Oh, let's get to this part. It's of like 25 the, minutes. Uh, the rat guy. Hey, yo, Shrimp. You're the one. What the minute is that at? Uh, right at 1645. 1645. I'll let you see the show if you become okay. my lucky. Well, what do you say? Uh, well, I don't know if that's such a good idea. Great. Now for your first assignment. So good, dude. Does he get to the part where... You go stand over there and see if anyone's coming. Oh, this is pretty much as far as it goes. Them running up and then seeing the fireworks. I mean, look at this, dude. I would be pumped, dude. I would be so pumped. The game deserves a remake of this quality, too. It deserves it. It does. So, I'll, a couple things I want to say about Final Fantasy IX before we move on. Number one, it was the final... Final Fantasy on PS PS One, right? We got seven, yep. we got eight, then we got nine. It, and when it came out, I don't remember if the PS Two was already out or it was just about to launch. But it was one of the two. This one got skipped a little bit because either the new console was here, or maybe because it was just about to be here and people were moving on. I don't remember, but it did get ignored for a few reasons, and that's one of them. Um, also, the graphic style. A lot of people. 
you know, they wanted it to continue in a more realistic, and this one was going back looking a little bit more like the classics, but in 3D, um, like Final Fantasy VI, etc. It also had some story elements that kind of felt familiar to old Final Fantasy fans. There were some throwbacks to the story in many ways, if you played all the Final Fantasies. Um, and it was the last time they did that. They never did that again, where they tried to do like kind of a throwback Final Fantasy. You know what I mean? They stayed realistic yeah. from this point on. So, would love it. Would love it. I would freak out. I would freak out. Um, yeah, same. And I believe it's happening. Like, I 100% believe they are doing it. It's just a matter of how quality is it? How much effort do they put into it? Are they keeping turn based, et cetera? That's really my concerns. Yeah, I'm curious. I hope it turns out to be something I love. Yeah. All right. Well, moving on. I can't believe it, guys. We actually got an update about Elder Scrolls 6. It's only been six years. Since we learned they were making that it was a thing, right? Only only six short years ago did we find out that that they were supposedly working on Elder Scrolls Six. It's not a huge update. Basically, all they're saying is that they're working on it and they have a test that internally they're running the game and playing it. And they just said they're super hyped about it and it's going to be super fun and it already feels like an Elder Scrolls game, pretty much. Dang! Wow. So not really anything too crazy, but still pretty excited about it. Uh, so 30 years of Elder Scrolls games. Um, the company reveals they're finally testing builds of the Elder Scrolls VI and don't expect a release date anytime soon. Uh, most people are calculating. They are assuming this game may be launched in 2027. Um, yeah, Elder Scrolls VI, it'd be cooking. That's pretty much that's the news. Um, but any update is better than none. Uh, so, we know there's progress, so that's great, I guess. All right, wow. So, I'll read the exact quote. Even now, returning to Tamriel and playing early builds has us filled with the same joy, excitement, and promise of adventure. Thank you again for supporting us all these decades. Thank you for buying Skyrim 7 to 12 times and all you have brought to the games and making them your own. We couldn't be more excited to continue it and celebrate the next 30 years. I added the one part about Skyrim, but it's still true. All yeah, right. take that. And that's it. That's all we got for that. Okay, now I've got a. We're going to get into. We're going to talk about Baldur's Gate three. But before that, real quick, I had to talk about this on the show. So Sega's next Sonic game is a. Uh, it's a battle royale, guys. It's a fall Fall Guys type battle royale. What? is going on are they like teaming up with the fallout people i mean not fallout fall guys is it why did they change the way they look why did they make them look like that is it called is it actually called sonic toys party is that the name of the game yeah i think so yeah well i don't know if this is this here, here? Toys? this is apparently the the trailer for the game oh, right it's a trailer here. I'll okay send let's, it to you okay let's watch this trailer apparently this is a a, a, a leaked trailer yeah it does look like the fall the fall guys but what I'm wondering is is why did they make theirs look like that unless it's a partnership or made by that studio or something maybe? I don't know wait, wait what the heck is, is this? It, it, is this a, is this the Was, game? Have they already done a game called that before? Oh wait, no. I don't know. No, I think you're right. This is the game. So maybe that was just a mock-up for art because it's a Fallout or Fall Guys type game. It looks yeah, like they apparently. Do is this a mobile game? I think it's a mobile game. All right, you're right. All right, anyway, move, move, moving on the news. It's a mobile game, so um. Anyway, through those mobile games. Anyway, no no reason to even waste our breath on that. It's a mobile game. Um, all right. So next up, let's talk about Baldur's Gate three. Developers are moving on from Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, it looks like they they um they uh, apparently they started working on DLC for Baldur's Gate three. Their hearts weren't in it, and they were like, "Well, it's just time to move on." Then yeah. So there will be no. 
DLC for the game, which is fine, I think. I think it was good as is. Um, and on what Baldur's Gate 4, when that if that ever happens, uh, that will be in the hands of somebody else now. Yeah, makes sense to me. Um, you know, they didn't make Baldur's Gate 1 or 2. They got yeah. permission to make Baldur's Gate 3. They did an excellent job. I think it was the best Baldur's Gate ever. Um, and one of the best RPGs ever. Um so I couldn't ask for more from them. They did a good job. I kind of already knew this because Sven was, uh, uh, Larian was already saying like not long after the game launched, like, okay, we still got our team keeping Baldur's Gate through with patches and updates. I got to move on to the next project. And I didn't yeah. even assume it'd be D&D. &D. Um, I just assumed it would be an RPG, but, you know, it could be um, Divinity Original Sin 3. It could be... Uh, a brand new IP. We don't really know. I kind of hope it is. I, I kind of hope, hope it's it is a too. new IP. What's cool about this company, though, is they learn. It's it's what you think, right? Like you always think, like, oh, this development studio, they made this game. Now they're making the next one. It'll probably they'll learn from their mistakes on the other game, and then it's almost like they don't. You know, like they, it's like yeah. they have to learn the lessons every release, the same freaking lessons, right? This is a studio that I have felt the progression of them through every single game they've released from Divinity Original Sin 1, which, by the way, that wasn't the first game. They've been releasing games for a long time. But you can see their rise to being awesome all the way to Baldur's Gate 3. Like, it's a steady graph. If it was on a graph, it would be a bar going up, right? Um, FromSoft is another company that you see that from where they just, you can see them continuously getting better with each release. Uh, so I'm excited for whatever they do. I don't blame them. Trying to make a story that goes after this is almost impossible because of all the starter points you'd have to have for depending on what happened to them. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It would be a pain in the ass. I don't blame them. I think they're making the right move. Let the modders take care of uh, Baldur's Gate 3 in the future. Maybe just... Keep an eye on it. There's going to be some patches. There's still some things need to be cleaned up. You know what I mean? Um, and and I, I wouldn't expect them to work on Baldur's Gate 3 for the rest of their lives, right? It's not an MMO. And it, they just don't want to do it. So they want to go do something new. Let They're them do excited it. We'll about the happens. new project. Because, you know, behind the scenes, they've already discussed their new project, right? Like, openly. We don't know what it is. But internally, they've already been talking about it. There's probably already artwork going storyboarding, ideas, they're ready to jump back in and make something cool. Who knows? Maybe you know it saying? will be a, a Sonic Toys RPG. <laughs> On mobile, even, if we're lucky. <laughs> On mobile. If we're lucky. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I'm excited to see what they come out with. The, I'm, I'm so proud of them. And you know what? I was I was afraid. I knew Baldur's Gate 3 was going to be awesome. I've been making videos talking about it and been hyped for it for a long time. I was afraid that Baldur's Gate 3 wouldn't get the recognition it deserved because it's turn-based, because it's an RPG, because it's based on D&D, &D, right? But the timing worked out really good for them because D&D &D blew up during the COVID days. Um, and that it was just perfect timing for like COVID ended, we're lives or we're trying to assemble our lives back together. Then Baldur's Gate 3 launches and it got a ton of recognition, right? Like game of the year, freaking everybody freaking out about it. People don't even play RPGs. We're playing it and loving it. You got non-gamers, like Just Let Me Play says, that enjoy it. It really did become a phenomenon. And I'm very thankful for that because sometimes games launch with the fizzle when the game is actually deserving of an explosion. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and, and I doubt whoever picks up the mantle 20 years from now makes Baldur's Gate 4, I doubt they can do it this good. I doubt it. There's just not many people with that much passion and willing to work that hard. You know what I'm saying? Like, the amount of work they did to make that game as awesome as it is is unbelievable. Um, so it won't be as good. This will probably be the best Baldur's Gate game ever. I doubt it will ever get this series could ever get any better. I just don't believe it will. This is the the best it will ever be. Yeah, it does seem that way to me too. Uh, but you never know what's going to happen. You never know, though. Yeah, you never know. Wizards of the Coast. Um, 
Wizards. Oh, that's another good point, Finn. Stranger Things brought D and D a lot of attention to. That's very true. Oh yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's move on to the next piece of news we got here. We got some piece of news. Pizza news or piece of news? I'll take either. Uh, for four hundred. Marvel nineteen forty three Rise of Hydra. Let's yeah, it's a up. little. A little thing here. Let me know when you're ready. We'll watch this presentation. I am ready. I have not seen this. All right. Three, two, one, go. Okay. Do you want to hear some more about that? Um, it's my... Yes. <laughs> it's my pleasure to introduce one of the greatest storytellers in video games, my good friend, Amy Hennig. Amy, come on out. Amy Hennig. <laughs> yeah, you know her? No. She did... Uh, she did the Uncharted games. Oh, okay. And something oh, else big that I can't I remember her, now. I see her face now. Yeah, never mind. I know who it is. We've been working on at Skydance New Media. Um, and I just got to say, I am so proud of what the team has accomplished. My God. It's incredible. Right? Um, Amy, I'm sure the audience is wanting to know more about your game sure. and the team. Can you tell us about it? Sure. Well, I, as the trailer hopefully illustrates, uh, we are creating a story driven. I'm going to pause it real quick. Era. I don't All know right. if you know this about her, Steve, but actually, um, have you heard the story how she comes up, uh, like how she comes up with some of her ideas? I don't know. I don't think so. So, like a lot of people, like they write stories, like uh, authors and stuff like that. They'll say that like they have dreams and stuff like that. You know what I mean? And yeah. they'll wake up and they'll take notes, or you know, they'll be inspired by something that happened to them in their life. This is crazy, dude. But this lady says that sometimes in the middle of the night. This mole right here will talk to her and tell her story. Like, okay, I'm joking. That's me. That's me. All right. All right, let's continue. Three, I was two. ready to hear something crazy. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Marvel action adventure game with an ensemble of playable heroes. But here's what's important to note. People might not think this. This isn't some custom demo that we made just for this show. That's our game. That is your right? Point. All the sequences you just saw in that trailer are all pulled right out of our game running real time in Unreal Engine 5, no smoke and mirrors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's sad that you have to say stuff like that. I know. Jeez. I'd expect nothing less from your team. <laughs> That's incredible. Jeez. Um, That's an announcement these project, days, by the way. You're really bridging the gap between films and games. But this is a whole new level. What's different nowadays compared to the old days? Yeah. Well, look, I mean... You and I have known each other for what, over a decade over now? Over a decade, yeah. Right. And we immediately hit it off, and I think it's because we've been chasing the same dream, right? Okay, okay. Which is to create richly interactive experiences that are cinematic. I bet there is a mo a mo I bet you there is a cash up. And it makes you feel like you're in a movie, <laughs> but with all the player agency that you expect from a really great game. Yeah, Marvel game, yeah. And in the past, this has always felt like it was just beyond our grasp. But I think we're finally crossing that threshold. Yeah, we're trying our best. Yeah. I always heard this 1943 comic series look, was really, really great, by the way. Story, it's I never read it. To be able to really faithfully capture and honor every nuance of our actors' stellar performances. So we've been incredibly grateful to be able to partner closely with our friends on the MetaHuman team to tell our story. Tell us a little bit about the visuals in the game. Well, again, thanks to Epic and the Unreal Engine development team, we've been able to leverage some of the new Nanite and Lumen features being released in the 5.4. And honestly, this is really helping our, our team to achieve a level of visual fidelity that enables us to present this authentically grounded Marvel Universe. Okay. All right. Well, let's go a little bit deeper and see some of these features that the team yeah, has Yeah, let's used. see it. Yeah, that's what I really wanted to watch the video for. Not so much that it's a new Marvel okay. game getting coming out, which it might be cool, you know, but... Colin yeah. Hedden, our cinematic animation director. Yay! And Roman Adiola, our director of photography. Oh, look, there he is. Dude, Everybody guy. knows that guy. Everybody knows him. <laughs> so Colin will be live and editor, and Roman will be on the virtual camera, just like he is at all of our performance capture shoots. So, if you all are ready, let's switch the feed and go back to that bridge environment. And if, let's see, yep. Well, you're live? Good. Okay. Because this is so in Colin the game. They're moving the camera in the game. Look at this yeah. So to create a really immersive game experience, the characters and environments have to work together harmoniously. We can't just drop believable characters into a less than convincing world. So we need to start with authentic and densely detailed environments as the setting to our story, 
And look, because part of our story is set in 1940s occupied Paris, we needed the word world to have a really believable and visceral level of detail. It does look pretty good. As you can see. Look at that smoke. So, yeah. Roman, yeah, that smoke why don't we looks excellent. On the ground here for a bit. Now look at that. That's an amazing amount of detail. It would have been nearly impossible to get something this complex to run in real time without the new features in 5.4. So, Kim, let's talk about some of the level good. of detail that we're seeing here. Sure. So, we're talking about Nanite's new adaptive tessellation feature. So, whilst Nanite lets you create environments like you're seeing here of incredible detail, the memory requirements can become impractical to realize for such a level of complexity across a huge level without the need for lots of instancing. And we thought that was a challenge and we wanted to deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, so Colin, let's actually strip this scene right down to the dirt so folks can see what we're talking about. So, see how simple, this is relatively simple ground plane. Actually, let's, um, let's show the triangles so you can actually see what's there. Just a few hundred triangles, let's pop it back to the beauty render view. Um, but with this new dynamic Dude, I hope you can play it with the triangle mode. We can actually display <laughs> simple geometry and create new three-dimensional geometry of the quality that you're used to with Nanite. With nothing more than layering tile textures and using shader logic, you can make incredibly complex effects. So instead of me trying to explain it, let's get Colin to show the magic and uh, let's see a transformation of this face. This technique allows you to see an unprecedented level of geometric detail but it's also memory efficient and can be changed oh, wow. dynamically in the runtime of your game. So things like footprints or tire oh. tracks or even supernatural effects, <laughs> if you such want, some would want them, can be visualized. And just to show how this ge simple geometry is now... That actually is pretty impressive form, for weather effects and stuff. Look at the view again. Yeah. There you go. What you expect from Nanite. So it's a really, really smart, interesting technique to actually get details in the, into the games without crazy, crazy amounts of geometry. Let's switch it back to the uh, detail view. Thank you. Um, and of course, as you can imagine, this technology isn't just useful for the ground and for the ground terrain. It applies to every detail in the environment. So let's fly over to that pile of objects on the left over there, for example. And Colin, while we do, can you kill those headlights for me? Cool. Thank, thank you. OK, so imagine our challenge. We're trying to authentically recreate a harsh winter in occupied Paris. That means every prop, Every object, every detail, every rooftop needs to be realistically blanketed in snow. Yeah, I was going to so say that. Let's show how we can dial up the snow accumulation on these objects. Dude. Right? And of course, we can That's dial pretty it back cool. as desired. That looks maybe really good. Chilly, actually. Yeah, actually. yeah, it really does. Or maybe um, uh, <laughs> and remember, so, of course, uh, I'm watching this and, and seeing the implications for MMOs. You know, like that will be yeah. cool. really cool. For the kind of games you like to play, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just. Because this technology isn't, it's its Unreal Engine 5 technology, not this game's technology or this company's technology, right? Layer by layer by layer. Right. Now, speaking of set dressing, that looks really let's go check good. out that fire barrel over by the watchtower we saw earlier. Yeah, that's the one there. And let's turn on a light to really illuminate the smoke coming out of the barrel. Ooh, Same. wow. Look at that. That is That's beautiful, amazing. dude. Could have never achieved effects this realistic. I never thought I would say that about a burning trash okay, can. This is what we call <laughs> I know, but that's actually like super impressive, dude. Particle sprites. Like, if if I was playing this game right now, I would have stopped here and just looked at that for a while. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. I mean, that smoke looks legit, man. That looks really good. Of the fire, as it dynamically illuminates the volumetric smoke, you can see that that light. Like, I know some of you aren't interested in this game, and. I don't know if I am either, but this technology being applied is really exciting. effects as well. So if you do want to put particles in the fog or even cards, you can do it. It all works in a. Yeah, that's really what I thought was cool about the video. The smoke simulation in Unreal Engine natively, if you want, or you can import open VDB datasets as sparse volume textures, resulting in film quality visual effects, volumetric visual effects, all running in real time. That total, are totally responsible to di responsive to dynamic lighting. Yeah, and it, it, it just looks incredible. Now, uh, of course, all of this is just to help us tell our story, right? And the story is nothing without great characters. So let's head back over to the bridge and catch up with Cap. Now, an essential part of any character's persona, particularly a Marvel hero, is their look. And it can be really distracting if the outfit doesn't look as realistic and believable as the rest of the world. 
can see, Cap's leather uniform fits just like you would expect in real life with all the correct material properties and the complexity of creases forming as he moves. From a technical perspective, this is where we can effectively utilize machine learning. We can set up and run complex simulations in a package like Houdini and import that data into UE. We then use this to train an ML model producing film quality deformations that run in real time. But none of this matters without great facial performances. So let's bring Azuri, T'Challa's grandfather and our Black Panther, into this scene, this time with his mask off. But I know who you are, Captain. America's hero. Oh, it does look really Dancing good. Dancing around in red, white, and blue. It'll be crazy once we have games. That shield that you hide behind does not belong to you. You are unworthy of it. It looks, that looks good. That looks really good. And this is in-game models. Sitting in a country. Yeah. Really show everybody the detail that we have. Wow. This is pretty crazy. It's, it's insane, right? Like, amazing. Uh, it's essential for us to retain every nuance of the outstanding performance that our actor, Kari Payton, brought. Yeah, the technology is crazy part of Grey, Donnie. What you just saw there were untouched metahuman animator solves. Wow. So working with the metahuman process... Once again, able to honor our amazing actors I don't... I, I may or may not even play this game. Yeah, same, same. But this technology for Unreal Engine 5 is stupid exciting. We're fortunate to have two of our cast with us in the audience today. Like, dude, if it ever actually happens, Final Fantasy 17. <coughs> yeah, if we live long enough to even see that game. This kind of. Yeah. This is the graphic style and technology that the Final Fantasy 12 remake needs, I feel like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I would like to see a 12 remake. That's just not high priority yet. But that was a good game. They're friends. They're not really fighting. It's all good. Um, wow. And of course, I want to take this opportunity to thank them and the rest of our. Is that all of it? For going on this incredibly. Yeah, pretty much. Then it just shows like an extended uh, trailer, but we don't really we get yeah. the idea. Uh, wow, the good technology, bro. Super excited for the future of. Uh, so when they were talking about this, uh, when the foot. They said and all that, in the chat that my volume is a bit too high compared to yours. Oh, uh, let's fix it. I'll fix it real time, guys. Give me just a second. You're gonna see a little bit of the backwoods action here. Let's try that out. Test, 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 test. Say something safe. Is that better? Some doodly ding dongs. <laughs> uh, yeah, the footprint technology, um, the water effects, like as it rains, puddles growing larger, um, snowfall. You know, all the the stuff that like that is is really cool. Um, that's the kind of stuff I think we all expected to see in games in yeah. the future. Um, and to see that somebody's made a technology make all that like not be intensive on the on the system and be able to pull it off is the kind of technology we need to be moving towards. Um, I would like us to, I, I, me personally, here's my big thing with gaming and where we stand right now. I think we need to we need to stop worrying about getting beyond sixty frames per second. Okay, we need to quit worrying about moving up into eight K. Okay, screw all that. Because we're trying to move into, you got to pick a side, that is what I'm trying to say. Frames, important. Let's worry about that, right? Let's worry about frames. 8K, don't care. I do not care. I don't, let's not even, let's, everybody, gamers, chill out on the 8K. Who cares? You know, we need to get frames and technology like this that allows things that actually feel more immersive right we i don't care that like like for example something really annoys me is like if you go buy a playstation 5 right now on the box it says 120 frames per second what what game what game no it doesn't it doesn't run 120k or 120 frames per second that's not true like maybe there's some games that do but that's not its average performance you know what i mean yeah it's annoying, and we've just moved in this really weird space, but technology like this is exciting because this is what's going to actually make things look cooler, play better, and have better frames, right? And that's what's important yeah. to me. Right? If they want to fix something, they need to fix... Make VR actually good. Yeah, make it good that? and not make, us, not make the average person puke. You know what I'm saying? So done. But, um, yeah, I like that. That's cool. 
All right, what else do we got to look at today? Well, we do have a oh, little something. We do have a little something. I don't know if you guys have heard about this, but supposedly, according to the leaks and rumors, Resident Evil 9 is going to be bum, 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 open world. Which could be cool. <laughs> it could be cool. I know everybody's doing it. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody wants to make the next game open world, and maybe we're all getting a little tired of hearing it. But that could be cool. It could be really cool. Now, this is Capcom, so bring on the jokes, chat. Bring it on. Um, so, Resident Evil, love this love this franchise. Um, I've been a fan since the very first one. Um, I do feel like this franchise got a little too far in the weeds especially by you, by the time we got to Resident Evil 6. Thankfully, Capcom realized they got too far in the weeds and kind of did like a kind of mini reset with Resident Evil 7, which was one of the best Resident Evils they have ever made. Um, Resident, Resident Evil 8 Village was great. I think 7 was still more impressive overall, but 8 was a great game. And so they had been working on Final Fantasy 9, uh, sorry, uh, Resident Evil 9 for quite a while. And the thought process here is that it's going to be um, open world, and they know now their engine can technically do it because, in case you didn't know, the RE engine is what powers Dragon's Dogma. Um, so it's an open world game. You could argue, well, it's not running that great, etc. Well, you would think, like we were talking about earlier, they would have learned from all that, and by the time they get to this game, they'd be able to uh, pull it off with better performance, I think is the thing. Hopefully! Plus, I think... For PC players, a lot of your performance issues are actually because of the uh, DRM and the anti-cheat and all that kind of stuff. Um, I, I think without that, it would probably run at least 30% better. Um, but yeah, hopefully we get that. What do you think, Steve? Would you be excited about Open World Resident Evil? I think if it was done right, I think it could be actually really, really cool. Let's talk about honest. let's talk about what that looks like. What does it done right? Do you, what are you imagining? Well, for one thing, uh, well, now that I played Dragon's Dogma too, dude, it's uh, <laughs> well, they it's, made the it's game. Hard so. to, it's hard to top. I mean, imagine that, but with in the Resident Evil world, that could be really cool. That would be cool. I mean, just uh, that alone, that that should that's what they should do. Like, imagine a Resident Evil game where like we, you go out into the world and you don't know if there's zombies or whatever it is yeah. out there, and different things could randomly be happening. And, uh, I mean, that could be a, a cool way to do it right. There's other ways they could do it right, I think. Um, you could uh, do it open. Just just don't make the... I mean, really, just make the world feel alive. That's yeah. the way how you do an open world right. Yep. At the end of the day. If it feels empty and pointless and you're just fast traveling everywhere, all over the place, all the time, constantly, like, what is the difference... Why even make the game open world just so you can say that it is? You know what I mean? I think Agreed. Final Fantasy 16 is a good example of a game that if they would have made it completely open world and you were fast traveling like you can in that game and many other games, I might add, uh, what's even the point of it being open world then? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, I, I want open... And, and, and for a long time, I, I don't know if I really made this clear, for a long time I've been kind of sick. Yeah. Of open world games because they just kind of feel all like the same game at the end of the day. So, I mean, it's nice when you do get a game that doesn't feel like the same old open world experience that you've had a hundred times. Yeah, I can agree with that. I think I think that like the the key here for in my brain for a cool open world Resident Evil is like I'm going to use places obviously that we're aware of in the that are uh, kind of uh, you know super ingrained in our brains for Resident Evil fans. So let's just, of course they probably wouldn't use these particular places, but this gives you an idea of what I think in my brain. Imagine like a a, a Raccoon City, okay? And it, I would like I, you know, me personally, I'd like to see him go back to the roots of zombies. Oh, me too. Um, I, and I would, I would like to get those old characters back too. I, I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind if they just said, "Hey, it's been a long time. Resident Evil One, been a long time. We're gonna, it's not gonna be called Resident Evil Nine. It's just gonna be called Resident Evil or whatever, and we're gonna re, 
you know, we're going to redo this whole storyline because it's a little convoluted by now or whatever. I'd be cool with that. But, like, I imagine, like, there's a raccoon city, okay? And all kinds of stuff going on in there, and it's huge, right? It's a big, huge city. There's a couple of smaller towns around it, you know what I mean? Like smaller, like a gas station, a couple of restaurants and some houses, you know, small towns. And the Arc Lay, if that's even how you pronounce that, mountains surrounding it with a bunch of wilderness, right? And they do just things like they've learned from making Dragon's Dogma where you just run into things happening out in the woods or in these small towns. They're set on kind of timers and, and at certain days, certain events happen and all that kind of thing so that as you're traveling around, you have a different experience versus somebody else who's probably played and done the same thing, right? Because you'd be, some people are going to spend more time over here, which means they're not going to see the cool stuff happen over here and all that kind of thing and piece it together much like they did Dragon's Dogma. And I think this could be really fun. Um, now I'm going to tell you what I could see them doing because of tr recent trends, okay? I could see them d trying to make this a survivor type game. Right? There's something about yeah. developers when they make an open world, they just feel like they have to put in certain survivor game type tactics. Um, so having to eat, having to drink, some building. I could see them doing that too because that is trending. You know what I mean? Yeah, I hope they don't. I hope they take the more of the RPG route. Me too. Go, if they go but. the RPG route, this will be fun, right? Yeah, it could be cool. It could be really cool if they did that. Like, you know what? I would if we're talking about story and and stuff like that. Like, I would like. I, I imagine a world. <laughs> imagine a Resident Evil game where. Uh, I think it would be cool if they brought it back to the to the roots. And and what if it was sort of like a a reset? You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. you were saying. And and uh, imagine that the first mission. Is the house that would and be? Then you epic, get out. Dude. That'd be freaking. And epic. it and it and it turns into like a Resident Evil Two type situation, and you get through that part of the story, and it turns into like a Resident Evil Three type setting situation. Yeah, like that would be cool. I agree. Uh, just and like then it play, can go I, on and explore more things other than just that. But I, you know, I all in Raccoon City. I don't think Capcom's going to do as little as possible, and it will still sell well. I think they could do that, but I think that. If you look at what they've been doing with all their franchises for the past um, almost a decade now, for like six, seven years or so, they've been really trying to build up their franchises to be better and more than they were in the past. Um, I know that Capcom just did the Dragon's Dogma thing, but the thing about it is Dragon's Dogma is a damn good game, right? It's a damn good game. Um, so I, I they, it's, they didn't cheap out. They didn't just try to like, you know do as little as possible. I, I feel like Dragon's Dragon, they did everything possible to make this a good game, and then they added a cash shop, right? Um, so, you know... I mean, look, a lot of their games unfortunately do have annoying cash shops, believe it or not, but uh, outside of that, like, I don't know, dude, they've been making some good stuff, good games, I feel like. like they, dude, I loved Street Fighter Six, man. I thought Street that Fighter was Six was fantastic. a great way to take they had that. a whole new mode of gameplay yep. you know yep it, it had rpg elements they did uh all the resident evil remakes have been excellent resident evil 2 remake was so stinking good resident evil 3 eh, it, it was good but i just didn't like that game as much as some of the others i resident never i never did play that one game they made that i said i was gonna play i never actually played it that exo primal game oh Remember yeah where the dinosaurs are coming in yeah <laughs> I'm going to have to figure out a way to at least play that one time. <laughs> I don't know it's nothing so about that. I didn't play that one. But, like, the Resident Evil, the Street Fighter um, series has been kicking all cylinders, I feel like. Resident Evil 7, I Monster would say... Hunter. Monster Hunter. They've been doing uh, pretty good with that, I guess. I'm not a Monster Hunter fan, but the fans seem to be super happy with it. Um, so, I don't know, man. I think this. I think they're going to try to do something really cool. Um, and I just hope... I hope they do. Hope it's not like you were saying there in chat. I hope it's not just a um, Assassin's Creed style open world. Just don't do that. Oh we're God, please! All sick no. of that. We're all so sick of that. Um, Grando says Exo Primal isn't good. Yeah, Capcom also does. <laughs> they release some weird stuff too. But what I was trying to point out was like their main franchises. They've really been trying to dig deep yeah. on those. The ones that are like their babies, kind of yeah. Street Fighter, Resident Evil. 
Yep. Even Monster Hunter. Because let's be honest, Capcom, I'm not going to, you know, they had a lot, that, Capcom's released a lot of good games, and I'm going to skip a lot of great games in this statement, okay? I just am. Yeah. But I just want to say, like, Street Fighter 2, Capcom on the map, right? They already had good games before Street Fighter 2, but that, you know, everybody knew who Capcom was, right? And then although they had some other good games in between, the next big thing that happened to Capcom was Resident Evil. You know what I mean? Um, they, you know, everybody was playing Resident Evil. You know, like, I didn't know a single dude. I was in high school at that time. I didn't know a single dude who didn't either play Resident Evil or was wanting to play Resident Evil. Like, everybody, right? Um, so that was their next big thing. And, and Resident Evil went downhill. Capcom, like most of the gaming industry, went down some trends of, like, let's make it more action-packed and all this, just like everybody else was doing at the time. And Resident Evil kind of followed that trend. And although I enjoyed Resident Evil 5 because the multiplayer, me and Steve actually played through that game several times, and I had fun with it, we knew that it was not Resident Evil like we knew it in the past anymore, right? And then Resident Evil 6, I played through that game. It was probably the biggest disappointment to me. It was super, like... Resident Evil 6 felt like we know what people like about Resident Evil, so we're going to put it in the game, but in the shittiest way possible. You know, like the puzzles kind of solved themselves, you know what I mean? Uh, when you're playing yeah. Leon, it was it, that was probably the worst one, in my opinion. Um, and then Resident Evil 7, man. Oh my gosh, that game is good. Um, I have very special memories for that one because I played it in VR the first time I ever played it. Um, and wow. That was a good one. In Resident Evil 8, it was good. It was good. It was good. I, I did, it, you know, I don't know if you can ever top Resident Evil 7 in VR. But maybe this open world idea could take it to the next level and really present something. I'm excited about that. I hope it's true, and I hope they do it right. Yeah, I hope so. I really do. That would be great. All right, Steve. It would be fantastic. Steve has found a trailer. I've not seen this. Uh, it's called Mirthwood. Let me know when you're ready, Steve. Do you fancy yourself? Getting it pulled up right now. All right. All right. Three, two, one, go. Do you fancy yourself a hero? A humble farmer? Perhaps you seek a darker path? In Mirthwood. You will choose your yeah, I like, own way. I don't like that main character. Construct oh, a yeah, he looks story. dumb. Oh, yeah, I don't like the animation either. Is, double is this a mobile game? We'll I don't, I don't know. <laughs> as a boil and a rat catcher. Because we can. Oh, you can be a rat We're catcher, dude. To disease wow. If a little romantically challenged. That guy's sad. For uh, now, I don't like the animation. Like to upgrade our yeah, I can't gear. say I'm a fan. Is this Co's game? Is world it? Bound to hide Who? Co Carnage, the streamer. Oh, is it really? I don't Unique know. locations dot the landscape, offering opportunities to uncover stories, find rare loot, and fight <laughs> for survival. I don't like, I don't dude, like now it. Dude, that, that is some combat, dude. Oh, I don't like this. This gives me like yeah, flash. I'm, I'm not this a man. tower. We find yeah. a unique I've only played out. one game ever that has gives me a flashback that I actually thought was really good. What was our it? Abilities and it was influencing uh, how others Tales of Iron. <laughs> okay. It's like this dark high fantasy souls like <laughs> game where you're a rat. Here in town, we'll look for work. There's actually a, we're going to watch a trailer for the part main 2 story. of it. It's coming out oh. here in a minute. And but the first one was really really good, like weirdly awesomely good. From their characters. The outcome of some scenarios yeah. are entirely but this up to you. does not look like my cup of tea. Even those yeah, involving like close that. friends. We'll choose to free Benedict rather than leaving him so, to die. All right, I've seen none of this. So, so I, <laughs> yeah, this, me too. This is one of those games <laughs> where, like, probably the indie developers are great people, and they're making a game and they're trying to make it really cool and have choices and you know whatever but that dude well, here's here's my advice to any indie devs if you're going to try to make an rpg and your combat's gonna look like that just make it turn-based just quit stop 
You know, just make it turn based, yeah. and then it's also more, maybe hire really a good forgetting. artist. Yeah, this animation is like literally like you know the old Flash, like when you would watch stuff on um, Newgrounds back in the early two uh, thousands and late nineteen ninety nine, where like it's just you make an arm and then you just pivot it on the shoulder part to make it swing, and um, it's just I don't like it. It's it's we're way too far past that technology now. Um, I, I don't yeah, like I it. agree. And and like I was saying, that Tales of Iron game is the only game I've ever played that has kind of that Flash vibe sort of going on, but is a fantastically awesome game. And I, can we go ahead and skip to that trailer, and then we'll go back to yeah, this yeah, other yeah, thing yeah, that yeah, we had right that. before it? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't right, think, I, that, I don't hold think I'm going to play that that one. That one is uh, dude. The first one of these games is awesome. Like I'm talking about awesome, awesome. Okay, that was not Ko's game. I'm glad to hear because I didn't want to sit here and bash his game because he's a great guy. Um, <laughs> oh, wait. Actually, I pulled up the wrong thing. Hang on. Uh, this one's called Whiskers of Winter. Let me find that one. Whiskers of Winter. I know it might sound crazy, but believe it or not, the first game is r amazingly an awesome game. I would maybe say it was a masterpiece wait, I don't see in its it own on right. Our, I don't see it on our list here. It's the one right after the Stellar Blade demo. Okay, okay. Oh, I see. Okay, here it is. Whiskers winner now. Okay, here we go. Ready when you are. All right. Three, two, one, go. No, I haven't seen this you yet. This is they just announced it. Peace is a fairy tale. Oh, I remember this. I remember the original, yeah. I didn't play Dude, it. This game was it. awesome. It is really good. Something you tell young rats to stifle the nightmares. It's high time you woke up. For the nightmare is upon us. As war raged in the south. I like how they're fighting frogs. A terrible and stuff. evil stood yeah, in the north. Those are like some of the big fan guns, the big the warring next. faction. Until finally free. Uh oh, this one. This one. imprisonment. You think you know suffering? You know nothing, my liege. Wings black as death. Fangs sharp as steel. And a thirst for vengeance that will not sate. There's a time for heroes. That time is over. The kingdom needs a warrior. Uh oh. That. Forged of the oh, north. Oh. And as he cold must be the as the snow that shrouds these lands. A rat. Carved from iron. Bred for battle. And unleashed in war. And so, well, this, I mean, this kind of just begins. goes to show you the difference Tales the art can make when it comes Agreed. to of winter. style of games. List now. Agreed. Like, this actually looks cool because the art is good, right, and unique, and it, there's a lot of detail here, so they're they're able to pull that, that animation style I was just talking about. Plus, it's just, it's moving quicker. Um, it's just a higher quality of using that style. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, when you're actually playing the game, you can't, it's easy to forget that it's that style. At least the first one was, anyway. The other one, I would not be able to even play it, no matter how good no, the game No, no Mirthwood. No Mirthwood No Mirthwood, none of that. But, yeah, Tales of Iron, I'm definitely going to keep my eyes on that, because I really, really enjoyed the first one way more than I thought that I was going to. Um... But I guess we can jump back to the that Stellar Blade demo teaser. Yeah, it turns out the Stellar Blade, which we found out was actually like a, a real like action RPG a couple of episodes ago, uh, is releasing a trailer, or I'm sorry, a demo here in four days on uh, March the 29th. So let's check out the trailer for it. So right. uh, what I like about demos is this is one of those games where it's kind of like, I don't know, am I going to get this game? I don't know, maybe. But since they're making a demo, I can play the demo and be like, okay, I want it. Or I'll be like, I'll wait. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right, you ready? Definitely. Yep. Three, two, one, go. 
I am actually really good. I have this game pre-ordered, but this game is so up my alley, it's out of control. Kind of Devil May Cry combat, RPG elements. Yeah, Open and world, it was, the director was, yeah, I think so, and, uh, and the director was heavily inspired by, by the Nier game. You can Nier tell. Automata. You can tell, yeah. Yeah, it looks good. Um, so, do you like action? Do you like like super intense action? You know, um, combat. Do you like booties? Smoking hot babes. Yeah. Do you like booties and really tight uniforms? Um, there you go. I, I, I honestly just want people to buy it so pe so develop so some companies will be like, oh yeah, I guess we don't need to keep making everybody ugly for yeah, the true. sake of political reasons. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with um, you know having a big booty, good-looking girl dancing around, killing stuff, and I mean, even just the. I, I hate to be ridiculous. And I know this sounds like really being a crazy person, but I, I don't know, dude. I just want my characters in my games to to be attractive sometimes, regardless if they're a man or a woman. Yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's a fantasy. Like, it, it, not even just about their body parts, but like their faces. Their like, face come on. Yeah, come we're on. always getting like these dog ugly faces, and it's not about like where I'm like, oh, I want my character to be so hot and sexy. I just don't want the a character to be like a. a and do you think that Hollywood actors would be successful if they are only casting like ugly people to play like in action roles? It's true. No way. It's true. Hang on, I'm going to pull up a so, good yeah. example here. Pull up a good example here of what we're talking about. Of, uh, the kind Is it going to be Sarah Ryder? Uh, here we go, right here. Uh, what we Fable. got? What do we got? Fable. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Look at that face, dude. I did see this. Look at look at this face from Final Fantasy IX. Of course, this is an original art. This is a, a mock-up, but, you know, uh, close, right? And then look at that. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> like it does not need to be that way. Like, like I'm what, sorry. Like what even is that? Look at the real actress right here. Why didn't you just make it look like her? Like I would be offended if I was her. And I then know, like, that's, uh, what, that's what I look like. I'd be like, oh my gosh, I am ugly. I'm disgusting. Dude, if I was that actress, I'd, I'd walk away from this experience with like a complex about myself. I, I, I could made see me look. that. Yeah, I could see that this probably did give her a complex. This is. Awful. All right. Um, I think that's probably the worst one. Um, that one is just blew my mind when I seen it. You know what's like, funny? Oh. Wild Relic said she looks like a meth addict, and I'm just going to go and tell you right now, this actually does look like some of the people that are wandering in the sh downtown streets of Johnson City. It does so look dead like on. one. Yeah, and here's, dead an on. here's another example of where they just like, like, why, though? You know what I mean? Like, because they think that they're appeasing some political but here's, ideal. I don't understand that philosophy. So what you're saying to people is, you're ugly. And that's okay. Here's an ugly character to make you feel okay with being ugly. Yeah, what? pretty much. What? That's going to make them feel worse? It's going to give them... Because everybody's going to be seeing how ugly they are. Let's say you just happen to look... Let's just say... Because this is true. Somebody out there, okay, in the world... Let me get it pulled up again here. All right, let me get pulled up here. So somebody out there in the world looks like this, okay? Just statistics alone. There's somebody out there that looks like this, okay? By releasing this game and everybody saying how ugly that she is, okay? And everywhere you look and you, let's say, oh my gosh, that character looks like me. I'm going to buy that game. And then you get on YouTube and everybody's talking about how ugly she is. Now you have a, now you have been called ugly. That's not good for anybody. You know what I'm saying? That's not good for the person that you're representing. It's not good for um, anybody else. The sad part is you just can't win because you, when you make the characters attractive, then they complain that that made them feel ugly. I don't believe that, though. There's no winning. I don't believe that the mass majority of people... Oh, no, it's not a mass majority. It's a small minority a small, that they're trying yeah, to appease, be. like, as usual, which is insane, you know? Yeah, I... When I Wild make a people character... people on the internet... You and Chad, you've, you've watched me make characters many times. <laughs> Do I try to make it have my ugly qualities? No. No way. No way. Like, who, does, who would do that? I did that for the first time ever. 
in Dragon's Dogma 2. I made my pawn be me. Mm -hmm. And I tried to make it look as much like <laughs> me as I could, and it's kind of hilarious. It's the first time ever I did it. But I wanted to do it, and I had the option to do it, and that's how it should be. I also had the option to make the the my pawn super attractive if I wanted to. You know what I mean? Right, like I, right. We need, I, I, the option to have an ugly option character fine. I'm fine with. Yeah. But being forced to have these dog ugly characters... All the time. It's just like, come on. This is getting ridiculously dumb. So buy Stellar Blade just for a vote of <laughs> we will pay for this. Hello. <laughs> true. That is true. Um, all right. So Stellar Blade demo 29th. Uh, I will definitely try it and see what I think about it. Uh, we do have a brand new trailer with some news attached to it, uh, for Chrono Odyssey, an upcoming MMORPG, which we watched on the show first episode, and this is one I've been kind of side-eyeing, right? Like, it could be fun. Um, yeah. So let me know when you're ready. Got it. All right, three, two, one, go! <laughs> Cool music. Yeah. Oh wow, look at all those enemies. They're straight up naming their studio after it. I didn't realize that. Ooh, that dragon looks pretty sick. The world looks cool. Yeah. And that, uh, that guy with the beard looks cool. I could do without the Kmart Final Fantasy appeal of armor style, but I can also get over it. Yeah. Oh, he looks good as crap. That was old Grizzletooth Williams. I liked him. Hopefully he gets his own game. Face alien woman. Sure, sure. Dude, that's Michael Jackson. That dragon looks a little derpy, but the other one looked cool. He looked like a hammerhead shark on crack cocaine. <laughs> yeah, it's a hammerhead shark dragon. So, not much we can really get from this, to be honest. Uh, I did, now, this scene right here where it shows all those creatures piling in, once again, this could just be a cinematic, right? Yeah. I do feel like they're using maybe in-game models, but if... Here's the thing. What kind of game is this really going to be? Is this going to be like a Diablo? Like you absolutely... Like bodies flying everywhere. Uh, the only other MMO I can think of that kind of does that is... Uh, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, BDO? Black Desert Online? Is that what they're going for, or is this just for, like, a scene of, a like, scene, hopelessness? Yeah. You know, like, the odds are against you vibe or something. You know what I mean? That's how I feel. That's how I feel, My too. gut instinct is telling me that's what it is, but who knows? Because you know when you make a scene, that very specific scene, with the lighting, the way the creatures look, every single human being sees that scene and thinks of a, a Diablo. Diablo 2. Right? I feel like. Yeah. Anyway. Um... I, I feel that. So, I don't know. A lot of cinematic, can't really tell much. Uh, I, I did want to comment on, like, there's this thing that people do, and I don't know if it's intentional or if it's just the way my brain works, and it's not really the way that things are. But, like, <laughs> there's a certain, like, like, that armor looks pretty cool and stuff, but it does feel like they're going for that Final Fantasy aesthetic, but they aren't as talented. <laughs> do you guys know what I mean? <laughs> I hear what you're saying, but for somebody who doesn't give a crap about Final Fantasy that's looking at this sure. game, they might see it different. Yeah, true. Yeah. It looks good, though. This is still on my radar. I don't have, like, super high hopes. Yeah. But, it, but no, you never know. It could sneak up on us, it and could we might be like, this is a cool game, yeah, maybe. Yeah, totally open. Who knows? Being snuck up on, you know, and slid in if on If it has it. disgusting ogres, I'm in. Yeah. What size cup is the faceless lady? 
Uh, hang on. Let me get back to her, and we'll try to judge that. Let's see. It's, uh, she's a double oh, Jengus. Dude, that is... Uh, that is uh, double Jengus. No cup size needed. You can free, no size needed. You can free willy that. You know, just throw a t-shirt. Free. <laughs> and that means that you stand on some rocks while it jumps over you with your fist in the air. Yeah. That's what that yeah. means when you free willy in. <laughs> Yeah, that's the kind of, you know, no offense to anybody, but, like, that's the kind of girlfriend that she doesn't even need a bra to go to the gas station with you. You know what I'm saying? All right, but anyway, we're going to move on. We're going to move on. <laughs> uh, we're we're going to go. It's time for the soul frame, man. Soul frame. All right, let's check this out. So, brand new gameplay trailer from PAX East. And I just want to warn everybody out there right now that this trailer may contain content inappropriate for children. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, it is true. I uh, do want to say this. Wanna... This is, correct me if I'm wrong, this is by the people that made, uh, what's the other frame game that's been very popular? Warframe. Like Warframe. I've never... Which I, I, I actually checked it out. Okay. Just for, the he just for the hell of it one day. Okay. And it's actually a pretty cool game. It honestly. must be. It really is. It must it be. It actually is people a pretty like cool game. So I actually, uh, this could be something cool. This Soul, Soul Frame might actually be kind of cool. All right, let's find out. Yeah. Three, two, one, go. This is supposed to be their fantasy version of Warframe, right? Yeah, which could very well might be a fun game. Where yon the veil did I chance to see you? A little minnow in the clear. I like the A little minnow. A foundling here of mother's sorrow. Okay, I'm going to pause it real quick. Convi All right. What's up with like 2020 on Winnie the Pooh type voice actors? Also, I mean it's okay. It's fine. Yeah, you know what I'm. Do you know what I mean? It's a little Winnie the Poohish. <laughs> Dude, I actually get pumped every time I hear that Winnie the Pooh action <laughs> happening. <laughs> I start something. to imagine that Winnie Pooh is is reading us the story like in a little. He's like sitting on a log out in the the hundred acre woods reading this to us. I'll get into it. <laughs> they got the Winnie the Pooh voice actor, for sure, for this trailer. I don't know who that guy is, but he's making some bank. Dude. After he finishes narrating every time I'm playing a game <laughs> where they do this, I'm like, silly old bear. I'm going to see how right every I time. am. I'm going to pull up a Winnie the Pooh. Hang on, I'm sorry. I know it's a major distraction from this. Anybody that was like <laughs> super hyped for this is probably getting pissed that now I've sidetracked. But I got to pull up like a Winnie the Pooh narration of some sort. You know what I think is actually going on? Okay, what? I think that they're trying to be David Attenborough, but they're coming off as Winnie the Pooh. That's my thing. That's what I think. I don't know if I can find the right clip for what I'm trying to... Like most small Here we boys, go. Yeah. Here it is. Christopher Robin had toy animals to play with. But his favorite was a bear called Winnie the Pooh. Okay, everybody heard that. Now let me go back and play this again so you guys can get... This. Where yon the veil did yes, I You guys hearing what I'm see? hearing? It's Winnie the Pooh style. The, little the Winnie the Pooh narrator. Yeah. Okay, okay. Let's actually watch the trailer now. Um, okay. All right. At 19 seconds, I'm at. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, go. A foundling here of mother's sorrow. Conveyed to me by beaver, by sparrow. <laughs> okay. Blighted it's like a more UK Winnie the Pooh narrator. <laughs> yeah. More righted though, and fish or something. <laughs> Combat looks good, which I would expect. That's a big thing for Warframe, right? Yeah. Come gather arms, but it's like a third-person shooter type deal. Yeah, this is straight up high fantasy. And join our family beyond the Interesting. Your Could be cool. I'll definitely check it out. Of everyone. Okay. Even bears. Even bears? Oh. Is that what it says? Yeah. Dang, dude. It's a serious bear. Dude, it's Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> that is Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> he sat, do you see how he sat down he all friendly? He sat down. Yeah, dude. Rabbit. Dude. He just came out there and stole rabbits, uh, stole rabbits honey. Dude, he's gonna be freaked out, rapping. Looks cool. I don't know. Once Dude. again, I, this is one that probably has a lot of people like pretty hyped, though, right? Because Warframe super popular, people love it. Um, and now 
this is their new game, right? It's high fantasy, which gets my attention. Um, I don't know. It could be good. Could be good. Yeah, it could be. We'll, we'll we'll see. We'll find out. We will find out one day in the future. I wonder when that game is launching. Do we know? Fact. I actually have no idea. <laughs> Let's see if there's any information about that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check. It looks like it's coming out on Taco Tuesday. Oh dang! This Taco Tuesday. It's called mm -hmm. Soul Frame release date. Late 2024. All right, so we might find out later this year. So they're going to finish any up good or not. the next Warframe expansion, get that out of the way, and then probably release this game. Is apparently they do say that they do say that they um, they hope they can do some closed alpha stuff during twenty twenty four. So we'll see. We'll hear, we'll we'll know more about it once some people get in there and start playing it. Yep. All right, what do we got next? We got Final Fantasy 16, The Rising Tide. This is the uh, final DLC story piece for Final Fantasy 16, which I love that game. Uh, let's so while we're watching this, I'm actually gonna I'm, I'm gonna still be on the uh, the call, but I actually don't want to watch this one. Okay. Because Spoilers. I'm just gonna play it. Okay. All right. Let me know when you're ready then. To so this has a little bit of gameplay, but but don't worry, guys. I'm still here, and we can. I don't care what you say or talk about during it. Right. I just don't want to actually you don't see, see it. it. Okay. Here we go then. I'm not going to get a drink anyway. So. Yeah. This is a new area of the map. They've added. Which that is cool. It looks good. I see some new mobs. You see there's new mobs? That's cool. Yeah. Same great music. Their game is, does have a cool soundtrack. Yes, uh, the, both DLCs are supposed to, are going to come with the PC port, yes. And it is called Soul Frame, yes, once to take with that other game. Ooh, a nice new town. Oh, that's awesome. I don't think I would have expected that for some reason. And there's the mysterious whatever that is that will probably be central to the story, whatever it is. One of the, for people that haven't played this game and you're waiting on a PC port, Definitely get it when it comes out, man. This is a really good it's story. It's great. This is one of my favorite main characters. Ooh. Oh, that was a new race. And oh, of course, really? We all knew that Leviathan, we're gonna, that, we all knew that. It's called Rising Tide. I mean, so. it's literally called Rising Tide. Yeah. Right. And when, that was it. When you play 16, there's a, a bit of a thing there about Leviathan that makes you intrigued. And now we're going to get to hopefully find out. He's using some of the powers now that are new, which look fun. I thought all of the, the summoning stuff was really cool in 16. All of them are addictive and fun gameplay. Ooh, Tom Bear. Yeah. Nice. I feel like this is a really low quality video for some reason. It's like 360p. Dang. The game looks really cool, though. Yeah, the game is cool. The combat is really good. Like, it doesn't translate in a video how much fun the combat is. The combat will... Even if the story sucked, I would have played the whole game because the combat was fun. Yeah, and, and as you unlock more abilities, you can really customize how you want your character to fight yeah. for an action game, you know? I am was the sacrifice of a single child. Cool characters in that game. Very cool characters. She's calling us. None other than Shiva herself. All right. Is 
deserves a better fate than the one my people forced upon him. He deserves to be free. Leviathan Blaster. Profane fragment. Final Fantasy. Yeah, same composer from Final Fantasy XIV. You can't tell, too. Yeah. Yeah, you can tell, and it's awesome. But, I mean, that game has an awesome soundtrack, too. A massively, insanely huge, awesome soundtrack. Agreed. Oh, there he like, is. It's like, oh my gosh, there's so much music in that game, and it's insane. The, uh... Like, each release for every expansion has a whole new soundtrack yeah. to it that's tons of songs. There's a lot of things when you're playing 16 that you'll be like, oh, I can tell this is the same director from Final Fantasy XIV. Um... Like, yeah. when you beat a quest, it plays, like, a little jingle that even, I swear to God, sounds exactly like one of the expansions when you finished a quest in Final Fantasy XIV. Like, it's so similar that I swear I thought it was the same song. Um, but, yeah, this was a great game. It's coming out soon, too. Whoa, whatever's going on there, that's freaky. Um, uh, if you like Game of Thrones, you will love this game. I'll true. say it like that. They did go for a Game of Thrones-type storyline. It's really good, and it's super interesting from beginning to end. Great main character, great side characters, um, beautiful world, great combat. Uh, this is this is definitely a game that, like, Baldur's Gate 3 just kind of, uh, you know, watered this down to not get as much attention as I think it would have. Plus, it was a PS5 exclusive. Yeah, so that, that didn't definitely help. hurt it. So yeah, get this. This is definitely a game I highly recommend when it launches on PC. And so they have said that like they're going to continue work on this game after this DLC. Um, I would guess that there's going to be well, they've already announced that there's going to be features in the PC version that weren't present in the PS5 version, etc. Um, and of course there'll there'll be some pack on PS5. Um, if that's what you're going to continue to play this game on, that adds those features into the PS5 version after, uh, you know, same day launch as the PC version. There'll be some like, it'll, and then they'll resell the game for PS5, probably called the Final Fantasy 16 Complete or something like that, right? And it'll have all the DLC included if you've never bought the game before and uh, with all the features and everything in it. So, just as I predicted back when this game launched and they were acting like it wasn't coming to PC ever, and I told you guys it was, and I told you guys there'll be extra content released for the PC version, just like they're going to do the same thing for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth for PC yeah. here in about a year. Um, here it is happening, as I predicted, almost exactly a year, like I said. So, <laughs> it's happening. Uh, but really cool for PC players because that's a great game. Um, I wouldn't miss that one. All right, next. I don't know how I feel about the name of this. I'm going to say it for I've not seen this at all. I know nothing about it. But I do this is think... very old school JRPG kind of game. Okay, okay, I might like it. I do just got to say before I watch it, though, that it's called The Legend of Legacy. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like they could have done better with the name. Like, I think it was on the DS originally, maybe. Oh, this is a re-release? Like, like a remaster? Yeah, it's a remaster. Okay, for the switch. All right, here we, you ready? Yep. All right, three, two, one, go. The grand adventure is about to begin. Legendary men return. The legend of legacy. The mythical <laughs> legend of epic. Yeah, seven souls seek their destiny. Oh yeah, I can tell this was like a, a DS or 3DS game, yeah. Their paths will be forged in realms uncharted. What's up with everything popping up on you? Is it? I don't know. Looks like we're all done. What the heck? The way forward is perilous. Is it turn-based? Please be turn-based. It is. It okay. is. This place is hot. Me thinks it's too barren. One to drop an accurate map. Yet legends are born in the flames of peril. <laughs> Oi! <laughs> Oi! You have been deemed worthy to hear the song. You have all been chosen. You must go now. 
stock up, rest up, prepare, your legend is just beginning. With each step, new worlds unfold. I don't understand. It's is like this... a pop-up book, maybe? Is it like... Maybe it's supposed to have like a pop-up book vibe? Is it randomly generated dungeons and it's like playing on that by the pops up as you I go? I don't know. Maybe. maybe. That archer looks cool. Discover the story of a lost land. The land of legacy. The legend of legacy. Remastered. I bet it was on 3DS and probably those pop-ups were like in 3D and it probably looked cool. Oh, maybe. Oh, <laughs> you're probably right. It was probably that. I I'm going to... Hang on a second, guys. I'm going to look up a review for the original. Legend of Legacy Review. Uh... Okay, so mm, mm, mediocre reviews, it looks like. 67% on Metacritic. Um, 8 out of 10 on Nintendo Life. Let's look at these Metacritic reviews real quick. See what we got here. One of the last 3DS games I played, and I loved it. Very polished, classic JRPG, and feels like a good something. This game reminded me of Romancing Saga Minstrel Song so much, so I had to get it. Uh, an okay addition to 3DS. It's not a bad game, but it has many issues that cannot be ignored. Well, whatever those issues are probably don't exist on the Switch port. The Legend of Legacy is on a portable system because once you start, you'll find time anywhere to play. You'll get a few Bam. more rounds of grinding on the bus or a few steps closer to your self-imposed goal while waiting in line at the bank. Graphics look like Bravely <laughs> Default. The critics' reviews make it sound like a shallow grind fest. Don't be fooled. If you're an RPG veteran that's looking for a truly unique battle system and you're tired... Of the same old boy from Small Village is the world's only hope cliche. Then this game was made for you. Legacy <laughs> will not hold your hand because it wants to be discovered. Pick your favorite character and uncover the game's secrets along with them. Approach this game with an open mind and you will be rewarded with a deep and satisfying experience that will show up on all of the top ten underrated games lists of the major outlets that are currently letting them pass by. I <laughs> guy liked it a lot. He thinks that's. I mean, it must have some kind of like like following because, or else they probably wouldn't have remastered it. I would think. Yeah, yeah. It looks like it. Overall, people like it, and you maybe know, it's cool. Could be good. I don't know if I'll ever actually play it. Back in the day, I would have probably definitely picked this up. Yeah, but it re it should, this game should have released a couple. But of now I have to be so selective with my time and what I play. Too many good games. Yeah, I'm like like one big game a month kind of guy that's now. where i'm at too no not really because of like finances just because time. of time yeah all right next up star wars outlaws releasing soon and new mm -hmm. feature confirmed is this star wars outlaws i actually really hope this is a cool game i really really do please please be good all right you ready steve yeah all right three two one go in this Star Wars Outlaws news update video, I will be sharing with you some brand new details about the game it following its age rating. Yeah, it looks and what pretty it cool, could I think. For a release date. But before we do get into today's news, though, make sure you do subscribe to this channel so you won't miss any future news updates on Star Wars Outlaws. So today, the game has received its first official age rating, and oh, this age confirms rating. a brand new minigame of a game that we did not know was going to be mm -hmm. in the game before, along with it's going to bring up speculation as to when the game will release. Typically, age ratings do indicate a game is releasing soon, more on that later on in the video. First spotted by Andrew Marmo on Twitter, the South Korea Games Rating Board have officially age rated Star Wars Outlaws for the PS5. And as you can see, for the PS5 version of Star Wars Outlaws, it has received the 19 plus rating, 19 otherwise plus. known as not available for youth, and it's 18 plus, games that huh? cannot be sold to teenagers. If we compare no this age rating allowed. to other Star Wars games, you will notice that Outlaws is the highest age rated game there is. Oh, for example, the highest Star age rated Wars Jedi Star Wars Order game. Jedi Survivor are 12 plus. Both Battlefront games are 15 plus and so on. So you are probably wondering what on earth has given this game such a high age rating? Well, the Korean ratings board have given reasons for the decision, and it's as follows. 
realistic simulation of speculative behavior. There is a mini game with content of in-game betting and Oh, it's got betting. That's right. We will be gambling within Star Wars. Some gambling in the, in the cash shop. I mean, in the game. Likely no, not in the cash shop. Potentially <laughs> something else. We do That's kind of cool, though. Yeah within the first teaser trailer for the game. Since we saw that, many fans have hoped this would be a big part of the game, given that you are playing as an outlaw and the game is called Star Wars Outlaws. Yeah. It would be a That's actually pretty cool. Because you do see people playing that in Star game, Wars. The yeah. South Korean ratings board have confirmed there will be some sort of gambling element within the game, and it's specifically a mini game. Which, if you look at other games, such as Red Dead Redemption 2, Sabak or something along those lines makes sense. This piece of information Man, will certainly cool. make some people very happy indeed. Given that this is a single player game... It really does look games, awesome. Players, I hope that it actually is. is it's is the Ubisoft part that scares me, I think. Yeah. You would see in other titles. But this looks way cooler than any Assassin's Creed game, I'll say that rating, already. You yeah. might be wondering which of those are included in the game. Well... All of them are not except for gambling, so there isn't really bad language, substance usage, and things like that. Oh, also, no. if you are worried that this game will be an 18 plus rated game in, say, the US, UK, and Europe, I wouldn't we worry drink too that much blue milk, because though. the provisional oh, yeah. rating. They actually are officially releasing a product now. Plus, and That's a blue world milk. World I've been seeing ads I've, for it. I've had it at Disney game, World, and it was delicious. Ratings. These aren't official coming through the database. Yeah, ratings, alcoholic or non alcoholic. Done so. So, what does this mean for the game's release date? Because the game has been relatively quiet in terms of marketing. They have not shared much recently at all, aside oh, from a few days ago when I <laughs> talked about some new features that are coming to the it's game. It's a Mon Mari. Nvidia press yeah. release. Nvidia have talked about a collaboration they've done with Ubisoft on this game to really make the PC version even better. It's got some really awesome. Okay, I'm gonna pause it right here. That video if you okay. That's what we need more of. Did you hear what he just said? They oh, partnered yeah. up with NVIDIA to make sure that the PC version is good and runs well. That's what we need. We need more of that. Yeah. And I know some of you might be like, oh, but I don't have an NVIDIA card. I get it. I get it. They should work with uh, Radeon as well. But that's my point is, is that like that's something consoles have right now. Like Sony will step in and be like, no, bro, we're going to send a couple of people over. They're going to make sure this is optimized and runs good on the PlayStation, right? Xbox has been dropping the ball lately, but they have the ability to do that, right? Whereas PC is more of a wild man's land, right? So if they're going to to make sure, if, if there's anybody who it makes sense would be excited or want it to run well on the PC, it would be NVIDIA or Radeon, right? Like, that that makes sense. You see what I'm saying? So, that's good news. The game could still be garbage and just run good. You know what I'm saying? But it's it's heartening to hear that they give a crap about the PC version that somebody stepped in to make sure that it's going to run good, right? All right, three, two, one, go. There's a button in the top right-hand corner of the screen so you can watch it after you've watched all of this video. I did speculate that maybe this is the beginning of some sort of marketing cycle, and then now, a few days later, we've received the first official age rating. Now, I want to preface this by saying that age ratings can come in quite early before a game releases or quite late. But there are patterns to look at that we can gauge as to how far away this game might be. Let's take a look at all of Ubisoft's recent titles and the time frame between them getting an age rating from South Korea to those games releasing. We'll kick things off with Avatar that looks so from cool. Tears of Pandora. I think it does too. This is the game that was I just always wanted to have a really cool looking Star open world Star Wars, Wars game and maybe this will be it. It took yeah. three months between an age rating to release. I prefer Ubisoft's Crew Motorfest took three months. The recent Prince of Open Persia Universe took four months. Star Wars Galaxy Creed Mirage took four months. That would be cool. Skull and Bones but, you know, did take, take two years, but that game received significant delays. So what does this tell us? Well, it's entirely possible that Dude, going into the ship looks really good. Just a few months time. That would make it late. That would make it a late June release, and late June? it's possible that does happen, although I am a little bit less confident, given that three months is quite a short time, and time moves pretty quickly these days. 
There is still quite a few questions people have about this game and want to see more, so marketing would need to start up pretty soon. Jedi Survivor did have a short marketing cycle of just three to four months, so it's entirely possible, wow. but still. Mm, As for that other would be Star crazy. Games in terms of it looks rating, pretty polished. So EA have done it the in the same sort of time. Sure. Fallen Order and Battlefront 2 took two months, just two months, for the verdict of the age rating to release dates, and Jedi Survivor took three months prior to the original release date before the game got delayed six weeks. This is just speculation on my part. I'm not saying this game is for sure releasing in three months. However, even if it does release towards the end of the year still, this is a good sign for the game that it's already getting an age rating. Skull and Bones is just one of those really ridiculous cases that unfortunately has gone through a lot of development hell, whereas at least with Star Wars Outlaws, we haven't heard such stories. Yeah, Same it's not been dramatic. Tears of Pandora. It did receive a year-long delay, but overall, the game did come out in a fairly good state. Either this age rating coming about just a few days after the NVIDIA news is pure coincidence, or things are starting to line up towards a marketing cycle for this game oh, wow. of its release this Han Solo? Summer. I just want to say yeah. I really appreciate the comments on these Star Wars Outlaws videos. There are so many of you so excited for this game, and it's really positive and nice to read. I know just how much of a dream game this is, for so many people and I really do hope we get some big substantial news soon because I'm sick of having to use the same footage in all of my videos. I really Rancor just want to share some cool. more with you guys but we'll just have to wait and see if Ubisoft do decide to kick up the marketing for the game. I'd love to hear your thoughts on anything I've talked about down in the comment section below so please do let me know. Drop a like to help support the channel, and if you did miss any of my previous news updates on Star Wars Outlaws, please do click well, cool. on the playlist. On I the think it looks pretty good. Um, I do too. It takes it takes place in between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, ooh, so that's a pretty cool that's a time period for it to be in. Yeah, that's a really good spot for it to be in. <clears throat> so cool, man. They could do a lot. Like, man, this could be really good. Please let it be good. Please, come on. Can we get some wins in the Star Wars universe? Yeah. Please, just be good. Please. Also, I mean, what I'm about to say is subjective, but I mean, I think it's pretty safe to say no ugly face syndrome. Yeah, at least that. At least that. I mean, I'm cool it, with how the character looks. Yeah, she looks like she's got, like, it looks like a real person. You know what I mean? It looks like yeah. a, like, there's... It doesn't look like they went out of the way to made her make her ugly. And no. also, you know, they're obviously not trying to make her to be some super sex symbol. Yeah, she she's, looks like, she's a, like cool a model. Bounty yeah. hunter it would be Star weird Wars. if she looked like a supermodel in the Star Wars universe, right? Like, yeah. you know, something about the universe, like, it's set up in a way where women don't really, like doll themselves up unless it's a specific race or something like a culture thing you know what i mean like the humans they look like they look kind of thing you know what i mean they get a very yeah and, and then even when you do see the ones that are dolled up they're like a part of like the, the rich people you right, know what I mean? right, you right right you don't get too many glimpses of those types it's true from right. the kind of characters we're like usually royalty. following in star wars but there has been a few glimpses like uh in the newer trilogy, they went to that game, that like casino planet place, and not that uh, that wasn't maybe not the best choice. Right. All the, everything that happened in that movie, we did get to see at least some of the rich douches of the Star Wars universe, pretty much. Yeah, and and in the Mandalorian, you see get see a little bit of that too. True. Yeah, I like. I think the world looks very Star Wars. Um, it looks like it fits to me. Uh. This could be a really good game. This really could. And I hope it is, and I hope it starts a new, uh, you know, a new, like, IP for Star Wars. You know, like, yeah, that would be becomes cool. a thing. Um, I hope it's awesome. I really do. And and I would really hate to see them screw this up because now I didn't know the time period. Um, but now that I know that it takes place in that time, I'd hate for them to screw this up because it's a really big opportunity to do some really cool behind-the-scenes kind of you know what I mean? Play on lore. They could do some really fun stuff. They really could. And because of the time period that it is, like, I mean, I don't think we're going to be having, like, Luke Skywalker situations going on. Right. I mean, maybe, but I doubt it. But, I mean, I definitely would not be surprised if we see 
people in the game from the Rebel Alliance in certain aspects, maybe mm -hmm. even like they're after people come after you from the Empire, obviously. You know what I mean? We may see little glimpses of characters like that. Yeah, agreed. That makes sense. Yeah, so uh, I'm looking forward to this. I hope it. I really hope this pans out and it's a fun game. Um, definitely has the opportunity to be, and I just I, I'm happy that Electronic Arts doesn't have the stranglehold on Star Wars. Um, yeah, me too. I actually do think that they're they're the the gosh, what is it called? Jedi Survivor and Fall and Fallen Order. I actually do think those were good games. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. But I mean, dude, EA, you know. Yeah. EA's garbage. And like what they did with Battlefront was god awful. Yeah, remember that with Darth <laughs> Vader? We're like, well, you can earn it in the game after 10,000 yeah. hours, or you could just pay us 20 bucks. You know, your choice. Yeah, that, that was ridiculous. <clears throat> yeah, so um, cool. Well, I think that's all we got for today, right? I believe so, actually. I believe that's all we got. So, um, yep, yep. we, that's all the news we dug up for. Oh, RPGs. something I, I oh, did oh, want to oh. talk about real quick before we end the show was some fans of the channel came to my restaurant. Very true. Uh, the other day Good or time. yesterday. Was it yesterday? Yeah, it was yesterday. So that was pretty cool. So they got to come meet at Mid City. They, we took a picture with them. Should we show that picture? I think so. Yeah, let's show, give them now, a show. Now, these are Cringe Pony TV fans. Yeah. Specifically. They met They Steve. like all the content, you know, but they definitely are fans of Cringe Pony, too. This is Steve's Restaurant. There they are. Uh, Cringe Pony fans came and met Steve in real life yeah. and talked about Cringe Pony TV, and uh, that's pretty freaking cool. Yeah, it was cool, and I just want to, if you guys are randomly watching right now, they said they don't do chat a lot, but... Uh, the guy is, uh, his, his name is uh, Ur Urban Hawk is his username. Um, thanks for coming in, guys, and yeah. and we'll probably we'll throw that up again on the on in, in in the actual cringe pony episode in case they're not watching right now. I bet for sure they will be watching that. Yeah, but uh, cringe pony yeah, will be so this much. Saturday, um, this coming Saturday, eight p.m. Central, nine p.m. Eastern. Brand new Crunch Pony. Do not miss it, Crunch Pony fans, because um, I don't. I'm not going to spoil anything, but uh, this would not be the episode you'll want to miss. Okay, uh, I'll say that. You, you've got some returning characters, uh, some fan favorites, and um, it's really good. We worked on one skit all day Saturday from like early, like 8 a.m. until like two in the two o'clock in the morning for one skit. Um, it's a really good skit though. Um, so make sure you don't miss that. Well, I'll be streaming throughout the week. Um, I have, uh, uh, the capacity of my, uh, job has begun. However, I'll be free most evenings. It, there's going to be a little bit of evenings that get a little mixed up because I'm doing, um, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, how do you say this? I'm being onboarded and sometimes some of that, uh, because the higher ups are real busy through the day, so sometimes they gotta wait till the evening before they can contact me and get some of the work done. So, it, you know, if I'm waiting on a phone call, I can't really go live because that means you know I go live and I have to be like, never mind, I gotta go. You know, um, but once once everything gets settled and I'm in the door and start actually doing the job, I'll be free in the evenings and it won't won't affect the channel any longer. But we, I am streaming Pantheon tonight on the Static Group live channel. If you want to come join that over on Twitch and on YouTube. So come check that out. It's going live at 11 p.m. Central, uh, midnight Eastern time. We'll be playing some Pantheon. And then tomorrow, guys, tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern, we'll be showing off for the, I think, the first time ever. I don't think anybody's ever shown this game off that I've found. Um... Not a normal content career, maybe some developers showing off gameplay footage, but I'll be streaming live Eternal Tombs starting tomorrow evening. So make sure you come mm. for that brand new MMO. I got the exclusive rights to jump in there and show it to you guys. So come for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and we'll see what that MMO is all about. It's one I've been watching. Uh, it's an indie develop, but it looks pretty cool going for the old school style roots and all that kind of stuff with some. Dungeons and Dragons type ideas for content. Oh, heck yeah, brother. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. And then 
you know, we'll be doing our normal stuff through the week, but definitely come back for Cringe Pony. That's going to be the highlight of the week for sure this Saturday, March 30th. Yeah, right the day before Easter. The day before Easter, baby. Make sure you come join your Easter Eve. With Don't you Cringe realize Pony. I've had diarrhea since Easter's? <laughs> Did you tell him it was the Lord's chips? Dude, I still think that movie's hilarious. It's a good movie. Well, guys, thank <laughs> so you all for coming awesome. out. We love you. We'll see you next time. Cheers, mates. Come back next Monday. We'll cover all the new RPG stuff. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, probably no retro night this week unless they just do a random time to Saturday be Cringe Pony. And honestly, Cringe Pony is going to take up the majority of almost any free time I have because uh, it's going to be a good one. Good one. Goodbye, everybody. See you guys. <laughs>